Hello, mortals, and thank you very much for your patience as we set up tonight's season one finale of Dice X Machina. I am your myth keeper, your dungeon master, Riley Silverman, and joining me, as always, are my motley crew of of pleasant fools and champions. And now I am going to say hello to all of my players, starting with the person who is to my left in my screen, which is Jordan. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jordan Pridgen, and we apologize that we uh, seem to have angered the the god Technos, who uh, clearly has cursed the beginning of this uh, this show a little bit. But my name is Jordan Pridgen, and I am playing Lysandros, who is a, a trickster and a gambler and a satyr. And uh, he is a follower of Phoenix, and so far that has worked out pretty well for him because he, we've discovered a bit about him, and apparently he is uh, he seems to be... Uh, a, a little older than he appears. So, mm -hmm. would you say that you are a Joker, a smoker, and a midnight toker? Uh, yeah. Uh huh. Okay. But some people call me Maurice. They don't. No one calls me. Some that. people might have called you that because what? you've won by wow. many pseudonyms over the years. That's um, a really good point. And then, uh, speaking of someone who speaks of the pompous of love, I'm going to say hello to Danielle. Is a professional gladiator in the same way that John Cena is a professional wrestler. Uh, if you watched a rumble that roiled yesterday right. you will appreciate d i did not watch a royal at rumble but i also still appreciate d i uh, saw instagram clips of it and that's what i saw <laughs> speaking of royals who rumble our newly crowned king of an undescribed yes. random town in the middle of the mountains of right. theros uh claw is played by ruben say hello ruben yeah i'm not super interested in being a king i don't think or claw isn't i should say claw is a centaur and he's uh he's got a bit of the wanderlust he wanders about uh goes here and there and helps people on on their journeys in D, &D terms he is a centaur druid uh and in theros terms he is a worshiper of nylea the goddess of the hunt all right and last but not least our friend ashlyn rose say hello ashlyn Hello, everyone. I play uh, Callista, and she is a fighter. Uh, she's a Leonin, and she serves a god known as Erebos, the god of death. And I say serves because she doesn't worship him. Leonins are known for actually not caring for the gods whatsoever and usually hunt down their followers and fight them. So she has a very uh, toe the line relationship with her God. And we've been learning that throughout the story. And uh, we're coming to an end of her journey with her God. Maybe, I don't know. We'll find out tonight. She has a certain Ooh. proposal with them. So we'll see. We'll see what Callie decides. <laughs> She's been thinking long and hard. All right. And I, of course, am Riley Silverman, your host and your your GM, your DM, your myth keeper. And I play all these gods that are messing with their lives. So that's fun <laughs> to do. And uh, that's fun. Uh, speaking of gods that we must serve, we, of course, must bow to the altar of commerce. And so we are luckily supported in our endeavors and we are given patronage by the delightful friends that we have over at Hero Forge, who where you can make and design your own customized minis. And as of last year in 2020, you can now have your custom minis printed in full color by Hero Forge, which is delightful. And of course, because all the fun Magic the Gathering races seem represented amongst the Hero Forge options, I have gone ahead and made Hero Forge forge minis for all of our cast of characters oh good heavens noble knight games is one of our lovely sponsors noble knight games has everything from dice and minis to an amazing selection of vintage hard to find and out of print releases and they ship globally and within the united states any order over 149 dollars ships for free you can also trade in and trade up. Need to clear some shelf space for new books and games? We'll go straight to Noble Knight Games where you can get cash or store credit for new games. They'll even cover shipping to send your games in. Use the command exclamation point NKG in chat for a handy link and use the code SAVING10 for 10% off any order of $10 or more. Complete your quest at Noble Knight Games today. 
Thank you, Ruben. And of course, thank you to our very generous chat and listeners and viewers who helped donate and keep the show alive and, and running as well. We've also had a lot of chaotic moments and fun storyline things that have happened directly influenced by the chat. I have quite a few of those in there tonight because I wanted to have some fun with the uh, season finale and some stuff that might help out for next Sunday's marathon game, which we'll talk about more towards the end of the show. And uh, we also had an unlock last week that is now going to be a regular part of our show, which is our ability to uh, bring in the Magic the Gathering aspect of this game. And so what we're going to do is we have a regular thing. Whenever it's unlocked, we will draw from a deck of Magic cards that are Theros-based, and then we will take things from whatever the draws are, and I will try to either incorporate them into the show, into the story, or into a special storyline that will be given to just the chat. So it'll be it'll vary from time to time, but they will always be used. And so if you want to take a look real quick, Dom is going to pull up. We did have an issue with tech last week, like we did this week, and so we didn't get a chance to draw live on the air, but Dom filmed me earlier today as we drew the cards and we posted that uh those are on our twitters um there's a link to the youtube video if you want to watch it later of it actually happening but uh you can actually see the cards that we drew with that out of the way y'all are you ready for the season finale yes of dissex machina yes I am all prepared. right here we go over the course of this season we have seen four disconnected Occasional, occasional friends, occasional acquaintances, but not all together at once, coming together on a journey that was sparked largely by the arrival of a strange returned bearing a mask that had an undeciphered code that, upon the direction of a sage known as Kia, caused them to head into the northeast, the... Uh, the, the, I have it written down, the Katakthan Mountains, to find the long-hidden legendary tomb of a, a court of Arrestus, the long-hidden tomb of a devout worshiper of the god Phoenix. Along the way, they found a few familiar faces, some that were less joyful to run into, some that wanted them to fight to their deaths and try to make it happen. And of course, some demons from some of their pasts as well, all culminating in the arrival at this fabled Court of Restus that had been unearthed by a recent earthquake. Inside, we learned that many of the decayed and lost bits of mosaics could be viewed only by our Phoenix worshiping friend Lysandros, who, once he touched them, also saw them crumble into disarray himself. They found some enemies that were returned soldiers of Phoenix himself and a couple little bits of treasure as well. So that was, you know, some good with the bad. But now here we are. They have entered a room that is the last room. It is a, it is a tomb. It is a chamber whose ancient masonry rises to form a corbelled dome. At the room's center is a pool of sludge with a broad sarcophagus that rises from the pool, its lid caked in crumbling candle wax and rotted offerings. Whatever rites were performed here were overseen by a larger-than-life statue in the alcove to the south, a sculpture depicting the upper body of a grim, masked man. The statue reaches out as if to accept what it is being offered. To the east of the room, a portion of the tomb's wall has collapsed, exposing a deep crevice in the rock. What it leads to? We don't know. We know that into the room, there was possibly a secret entrance that was only noticed by Claw and not shared with the rest of the party. However, the more important detail of the room right now is the last, possibly, of the Lampids that have been a thorn in the side of the party at large, but a particular thorn in the side of Claw as they once drove a giant spear through his side and causing his death. The Lampid looks up and sees the party, but rather than leap into an attack or any sort of defensive stance, it continues to obsessively work on the sarcophagus itself, and it sees and whispers to them and says, If you help me, we can get him. What do you do? Callie draws her sword. D also draws her sword, but uh, D stands very close to Callie while she does it. 
yet. All, all right. Uh, but before we escalate things, uh, get who, Mister uh, Lampid Guy? By the Eidolon, of course. I might be mispronouncing that. It's uh, Eidolon, yeah. Eidolon. Eidolon. The Eidolon, You're good. of course. You're good. Yeah. It knows things. Who's Eidolon? Varius. Varius. Does it know anything about this faint axis? Varius, yeah. Silence whisper thing. Oh right, silence of Arrestus. Oh right, I... the uh, the name of this episode, by the way, is Phoenix's Silence. I've got to mention at the top. Of the ah. Show. As I look for my note, that's the silence says the of Arrestus. <laughs> I'm. Uh, by the way, Claw isn't saying anything. Claw is angrily staring. Okay. Good to know. Yeah, Phoenix's Silence. That's what I'm looking for. Doesn't know anything about this Phoenix's Silence thing. It might know something. Does it, do you have an idea of what it might know or do we have to help you to find that out? I'm trying to get to it for Phoenix. Uh, I, want to, I want to make one thing very clear. Helping you is not an option. Oh, you, you look friendly. You are looking wrong. Yeah, it, do you it doesn't recognize sound like you me? read that way. I don't recognize you. Am I supposed to? I recognize you. Okay. Helping you is not an option. Your options are you leave or I kill you. Oh. Oh. I don't think I like that deal. Everyone roll initiative. As you say that, it turns and it like raises its arms up like it's going to attack you. Sorry if Claw was going to have to be that guy. <laughs> oh, I think well, it seems fair. Yeah, I mean, Callie would look back and be like, hey, Claw's got a problem with you. That's good enough for me. <laughs> She'll swing her sword. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the Lampad that killed me, right? It looks pretty clear. Yeah, you, you have a pretty good idea that it seems like it might be. Although okay. there was definitely teamwork involved. Yes, I love true. this dice. This is the best dice ever. Praise this Ooh. dice. <laughs> I got a 19. Me... Ooh, oh, nice. boy. Ooh. Let me know when it. you want me. Oh, yeah, sorry. I... It's for me, it's an everything thought hopping in there. Uh, give me one second. Let me... Uh, add. So this room we're in looks huh? like it's about 25 foot square with 15 foot alcoves, maybe yeah. 35 feet long total. And there's a pool of sludge is what that pool is. Yeah, a pool of sludge. And also a reminder, I, I did not mention this at the top of the show for the audience. Also in the room, besides the statue I described, there are three harps, three harps. which if anyone remembers, they were the harps that were in uh, Claw's dream previously. So one looks ancient, like it has been taken apart. Uh, one looks perfectly resplendent, and one looks like it is being constructed by pieces of another harp. All right, Lysandros, what was your initiative? My initiative was eight. Okay. Claw, what was your initiative? 12. 12, thank you. D, what was yours? Two. Two, okay, and Callie? 19. And a 19, is that why you think your dice? Yes. Cool. <laughs> All right, Callie, uh, you get to go first. What do you do? Uh, yeah, so Callie is just, the, the Eidolon says that, and I'm gonna look it straight in the eye. Does it have eyes? I'm assuming it has eyes. The Eidolon you don't see. You The thing oh. told you the Eidolon was there, but you're only talking to oh, the Lampad. the Lampad right is- Oh, the... sorry, yes, the Lampad. Yeah. That thing, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It seems my friend has a problem with you. What'd you do to, what'd you do to upset Claw? He doesn't anger easily. I anger so many. Maybe he escaped the land of the dead. It is my job to keep them from doing that. Mm, highly doubt it. It was my job until I found a better boss. Uh, when I said highly doubt it, I went ahead and started swinging. 
Okay. <laughs> and uh, so you you moved you moved up to where they were. Boss, yes. you say. Cool. Uh, fifteen. Uh, fifteen. I will tell you. Just hits. Now you know the AC <laughs> is fifteen. Ooh. All like right. Smashy, sm- slashy, slashy. Yep. I will re-roll my one. Uh, eight. Eleven damage. Just okay. Phew. Okay, and oh, let's let's go ahead and get a reroll count real quick for the audience. So we we didn't do I you know yeah. we we had such an issue with uh, tech that I kind of missed that step to begin with. Right. So let me start the show off real quick and get some of those. I apologize. So we currently have. Uh, I apologize, everybody, for that. So I had four. Now I have five, and then we have uh, for me one, two, three. Four, five, six. We have six for the players. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Ashley, did you use? Did you use a reroll, or was that an abil- ability you have? What? Oh, the reroll, the one. That's yeah. a. That's my great sword. Uh, right, cool. Feet. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. That is a because yeah, I'm great. Okay. Excellent. And then for me, I have five, six, seven, eight, nine rerolls for me as a GM. So that's nice. fun. Let's oh. go ahead and thank Ooh. all those reroll givers tonight. We got those from Shimixon, uh, BSB Car, Gina PDX, Civil Savage, Eight Eighty, RD Armand, Host Coter. I apologize, like I'm saying your screen names wrong. Uh, Simi David ninety five, CMF uh, Pirinkoth, uh, Zwater, and of course the unnamed Turkey, which is maybe my favorite new screen uh-huh. name ever. That's so amazing. Congrats- yeah, Love and then we also friends have friends in there. Yeah, and then also as I, I apologize to your friends if I butchered their names. <laughs> and then we also have to start the show off one toast. Let's get that toast out of the way first. That comes to us from NPCs without limits, who said, "Ooh, we sure is to hard to fight with no thumbs, but I'm sure the gods <laughs> are on the hero's side." Ooh, we. Here we go. Yep. Thank you. That's a that's that's a that's a reference to the the wild cards watch along mm-hmm. we just oh, did. Oh, lovely. Oh, so, oh, nice. Oh, watch all oh, wild cards. Mm-hmm. Hardly knew. That's you. awesome. All right. Um. Okay. Now, okay. Callie, what was your damage? You did eleven damage. Anything else? Yes. You a, you're a slasher, right? What's your yes. slasher damage? So, uh, yeah. yeah. So I did eleven damage, and then so because I did slash, uh, the lampet is now slowed. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it can't. Its speed is reduced by ten feet. Uh, okay. Until my and next it, turn, and it has to attack you where it gets its advantage, right? Uh, yes. And so I unwavering mark it, and I finally figured out nice. what I want to do for that. So okay. when I hit it, yeah, and I do an unwavering mark, what that's going to do is it's going to put a slash in them that is so like has so much force that it's almost like a cut that like sure it might scar them or whatever, but it like it has like a different glow to it. Like it yeah. hits them so hard that like you see like it almost like bleeds like a spew of like a different color or something. Okay. Ooh, I like yeah. that. I'm going to go with that. It like bleeds black for a moment. Ooh, nice. And that's my own wavering mark. Okay. And so, yeah, I'm going to mark the uh, lamp in. Cool. I'm going to put a little thing on him so I know that he is marked. I'll put a little, I'll put a. The cat screech is, yes. is nice. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, the sound that effect of the mark. That yeah, Honestly. That's, that's what you hear. <laughs> see, the problem okay. with doing this show in a studio is that we aren't going to get random cat sound effects when Callista does stuff. <laughs> Although yeah, we did exactly. have Dom's dog quite a few times. True, we did um, get snoring, yeah. but... Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, it is the Lampet's turn, and the Lampet is obviously going to attack the creature that just made it so that he has to attack her. Um, so he's going to turn to you, and he is going to use a little thing called... Uh, he gets to attack you twice with what is called Necrotic Touch. So I'm just going to roll twice for that. Let's get that out of the way. And uh, 22 and 24. So both of those hit, correct? All right. You take a total of 13 necrotic damage. That's all you got? Great. All right. Now it is Claw's turn. Claw is going to slowly but confidently and angrily pace forward. Okay. And he's going to say, you really don't remember who I am. You killed me. You killed Daxa. You killed Saya. You tried to kill Roth. Turns out you didn't really kill me either. I've do you returned. step into the water or do you step kind of to the side next to where Callie is? Uh... I'll walk around the edge. Is that where the lamp pad is? 
Yeah, the lamp head's kind of like at the border of the edge. So yeah, you, you I'm not going to. I'm not going to step into the sludge unless I have to. Okay, just want to make sure. And I'll step right up to the lamp head and stare it in the face. And my action is mm -hmm. going to be a uh, cloak of stars. Okay. Uh, I'm going to wrap myself in a starry cloak. And for the next minute until, or until I take it off, uh, attacks against me have disadvantage. Then my bonus action is going to become a starry form. And I'm going to become the starry form of uh, one you haven't seen before. Okay. So Ooh. what you see, previously you'd seen the archer. You had seen the chalice. Um, now you see claws shift. Claw's form shift and change. And as you see, in, as is represented in my makeup this evening, the bow is not, the, the bow string is not straight up and down. It is drawn. Oh, interesting. Ah. And you see Claw's, the stars at the joints change and shift and his form becomes a shape of a winged dragon. Ooh. Oh, wow. And I will take on the draconic form, essentially. Ah. Eight. Now, how many um, of those do you get per day? I get, they're, they're like wild shapes. Okay, cool. Uh, I also haven't used any today. So I actually That's right. have That's right, you used one... it in the other fight, not the one outside. Yeah, okay. so I actually have two, no, I have one more this combat, and then it would be another um, short rest before I get them back. Okay. The dragon's effects for your... Uh, personal edification whenever you make an intelligence or a wisdom check or a con saving throw to maintain concentration on a spell i can treat any roll of a nine or lower on the d20 as a 10 okay so it's cool. basically impossible for me to fail con saves cool. later Good to know. but the, so that's the spells that i'm doing but you what you see is claws form shift and darken and become more severe and he says who sent you to kill me back then? Who did you work for? Mogus? I don't think so. Not savage enough. The patron of this temple? Doesn't seem like Phoenix's style. And Lysandros has more sway as a representative of the God of Lies anyway. Erebos? Callista of the Swift Claws surely outranks you under the God of Death. Farika? Not her style. It's too quick. Too savage, no savoring the moment. You must have worked for Athreos, yes? Surely you weren't freelancing. You Tell just me got... before you die. She like it like looks at you and kind of like scans you, like it like it finds you to be familiar, and it places you and it goes, Oh, the centaurs. Yeah, I was centaur. This was not obvious to you. You stupid whatever you are. To be fair, sometimes you're not a centaur. You're actually you know, not. You know really what? I am right a dragon now. this time. You yeah, know right what? Now, fair, <laughs> fair point. But also, you're going to die. Yeah, it, I, I'm going to kill you. I jokingly was going, you're not really a centaur. It is like yeah. otherworldly and kind of like woofy. Mm -hmm. So it just goes, just looks at you and it goes, I'm afraid you just got in our way. Got in our way. Yeah, we were having way. fun, and you just showed up and tried to ruin it. So we had to stop it. We were walking through the woods. We were going on in through a passage. Surely, if you were working for Athreos, that is against the rules. I wonder if you did not leave your previous position on purpose. I wonder if you were dismissed. We got a better offer. Doubt it. Who do you work for now? You already said his name. I said like five names. We can play 20 questions, but I fear you're going to be dead before then. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to move over to yeah. Lysandros' turn now. Yeah. So uh, Lysandros, even though like there's obviously action and stuff happening, kind of just backs up and, and he says to everyone, he's like, ah, look, everybody, I, I'm getting the impression that this person is is somehow a servant of Phoenix in a temple of Phoenix, which I also sort of owe, you know, certain amounts of debt and loy. And I, I, I don't really know where I stand in the, the hierarchy. I, I'm, I'm not sure if I should be attacking uh, who, who could be another uh, servant. of. And he kind of just, as he's saying this sort of like, finds his way to kind of pull back into a corner uh, and like get away from everything. 
and he just goes, I, 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 are, are we sure we're supposed to like kill, kill this guy? I, I'm just, I'm worried about being like smote or something like that. And uh, he's going to just hold action. So he'll okay. just kind of take the turn off. Okay. One thing I will say, Jordan, is that if you are moving back, like you're moving back, like you're hiding, one mm -hmm. thing you immediately realize as you move back is that the once open slab in the wall that you all moved to come into this chamber is now sealed shut behind you. And none of you heard it close. It is just mm. sealed shut. Nice. So so Lysandros backs up as he's talking and walks right into the sealed door and then kind of like turns around and he's like, ha, okay. Whew. This might be more of a... Uh, it's probably more of a thing than I hoped, but yeah, that's all he's going to do. Great. Thank you. All right. That is your turn. Now it is D's turn. All right. So D sees, D decides I'm going to cast a spell. Okay. Um, I am going to cast um, suggestion. So D turns um, and says, you know what would be really cool right now um is if you just like laid down and had a nap doesn't a nap sound so good you have been so busy and you have been doing so much work you're trying to like get us all to to help you on this journey haven't you been doing this for a long enough that you're so tie tie <laughs> oh i am exhausted aren't you guys so tired doesn't a nap just sound <laughs> so good right now i can listen to you describe mm -hmm. d talking to people all day uh, we probably shouldn't because <laughs> we have a game to run but i could do right it. <laughs> um <laughs> go ahead and so that's a i'm assuming you're casting a spell right mm -hmm. Um, what is the DC that I have to, what is the save for that spell? Uh, the save for that is a wisdom save of 13. Wisdom save of 13? 17. <sighs> um, it just looks and it goes, I will sleep when I'm ready. <laughs> and that is your turn. Uh, and then I go ahead and I, I have uh, my last bardic inspiration. Ooh. So I'm gonna go ahead and ah, who am I inspiring? I am going to, you know what? Not that I don't know that he needs it, but it's been, it's been a journey. So I'm gonna turn to Claw. And I'm gonna say, Claw, this is your moment. You have been waiting for this. It is time for you to get your revenge. You're and God's damn right, you, it's my moment. And we believe in you and all of us believe in you. You are about to kick this son of a, mm, right up its, mm, <laughs> and then wait, you, you, fired. You, wait, did you say you, your words cut out there? Did you did you mean to you you were going to say the son of a something and I didn't uh, hear what a, a bad thing, the son of oh, a bad thing. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, you were self. I see what you were doing. Mm -hmm. Just you know, it's something bad. But we believe in you, and I can't wait to see you uh, uh, kick it right, and it's whatever would hurt the most. That's right. Okay. Inspired. That is your turn. All right, uh, so you have a D, is it a D8 at this level? You have a D8 is, that you can- Is it a D8? Or D6? It's a D6. D6 at this level that you can then use to uh, add to a roll if you need to. I'll All right, Callie, nice. we are back to your turn. Right. You want to look at there. <laughs> All right, Callie will, um, she's gonna try to slash and bash again, cause yeah. Um, Oh, um, what did what did the Eidolon say earlier? The Eidolon, Eidolon, you haven't talked to yet. This is the lamp. Oh, sorry, I keep They're saying Eidolon. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do mean the lamp. <laughs> Eidolon is just easier to say. Mm -hmm. All right, it said a lot of things, so I need to know yeah. what you mean by um, what did you say earlier. When she was talking to Ruben, I believe. Mm -hmm. Or no, no, no. Actually, I remember what it was now. Okay, cool. Um, so well, can you share it the class just so we know what you're yes. referring to? Uh, going, <laughs> zoom, 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 combat. Um. Well, Sandros had just said his thing about not knowing what to do because this is his God's temple and it's serving the God. Well, Sandros, I, I totally get what you mean, man. This is a lampid. It's supposed to be serving Erebos. I'm going to turn to it and eye it. The God of death. So I understand you feeling very conflicted right now. If you feel like you need to back out of this, 
I understand. If you feel like you need to join your God side, I do not understand. So please consider your options here. Um, but I would really appreciate as a friend, some help to just close out this last thing I need to do so that I can just get done with this God, get just, just get done with the God forsaken gods here. And then I'm just going to swing. Okay. Make your attack roll. Uh, 18. Sorry, I know I hit. Yep. You hit? Yep. Ah! Ew. Uh, do, 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 do. 11 plus 3, so that's 14. Okay. Yeah, you're doing some pretty good damage to it. It's it's not, it's it's just about bloody at this point. It was hurt. Now it's looking a little bloody, so that's good. Um, and it has definitely focused its attention on you at this point. And so it is going to turn back to you. However, uh, Claw did just make a threat to it. So it's going to attack each of you once. So it's going to first do a chill touch to you and then a chill touch to Claw. So it's going to be like with both of its hands. Sorry, not a chill touch, a necrotic touch. Um, yep. So it is going to go to first do... To Callie for its first one, uh, which is going to miss because it has a 12 and you have a 16 as your AC. Mm -hmm. And then it had disadvantage when it attacks Claw because of the star. So I'm going to go ahead and try to make that attack here. Yep. Okay. Uh, it did hit you because I rolled a 20 and a 22. Great. Those hit. Great. Um, yeah. Um, so you only get one of those, so um, because it's disadvantaged. So yep. uh, the seven necrotic is what does. So the one that does hit because I have resistance to necrotic damage yep, because I right. have Nick's born resistance. That's nice. Right. So you do have that. You get so you only take three. Cool. Cool. Since it did do damage, mm -hmm. I will get to make a special attack against it okay. on my next turn. Um, cool. That has advantage and two extra damage. Okay, that's nice. because it attack claw. Uh, it, because it attacked Claw and did damage. Okay, yeah. cool. Good to know. All right. Uh, Claw, it is now your turn. Cavalier, baby. I <laughs> am just going to... So I'm still angry dragon Claw, and I want to glower down at this this uh, this lamp pad and say... I want to... So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to take my hand my starry dr draconic hand and grab it by whatever throat it has. Okay. I'll let you do that. And I want to say, who did you work for then? Who do you work for now? Make an intimidation check for me at advantage. Okay. Intimidation. Minus one, because charisma. Mm -hmm. uh, can I use a reroll? Yeah, you can reroll. Much Please. better. All right, 17. Okay. And it rolled a 13, so you did beat it. But I have a lot of rerolls, so I'm going to use one of mine just to see why okay. not. Um, That's what they're for. Yeah, I got worse that time. So, yeah, you got you intimidated it. So it looks at you, and it says, We serve the god of lies. Not now, but who did you – did you quit – you worked for Erebos before, and now you work for Phoenix? Not when we killed you. Who Again, did you work? You stumbled upon us, and we took care of the problem. I think, okay, I think maybe just a mis I think you're maybe misremembering or there's confusion. You, you didn't just run into them in the woods. Like, you no, were I know. pursuing them. You were hunting them. I okay. know. It sounds like they were just freelancers at the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I Ruben can't... remembers. Okay. Claw remembers differently. Okay. I just, okay. Yeah, they like they they're saying what they're saying. They're basically yeah, saying like we were you stumbled upon us. We serve they they're essentially saying we serve Phoenix. Yeah. Um and that's all they're like they're not really understanding your question. Right. So, so now I'm gonna say you serve Phoenix. Lissandros serves Phoenix. Lissandros was told to come here specifically by the god of trickery. Were you not? He'll look over his shoulder now at this point. Well, wait, no, I, I mean, if, if you're thinking back through things, I came here as a favor to Callie because she had the mask that I could read, remember? Oh, you have the mask? No, I had had the mask. There's, there's no evidence that we necessarily have the mask now. The mask is what we need. 
If we have the mask and we have the soul of Varius, we can find out what it says. Sister! It yells, and then oh, no. suddenly oh, from the crevice in the wall oh, appears another lampid. Perfect. Uh, and uh, this one oh, is good. apparently it's a, party. a female. Yeah. And I'm gonna add her turn. Um, so cool. And I'll find out what she goes. You guys. My go intimidation, ahead. I assume, was my action. Um, yeah. Let's see what bonus actions I have that I can do here. I'm gonna hunter's mark this person. The first one. The one that I have my hand around their throat. Okay. And that's my turn. Okay. All right, so you hunters mark them, and I will go ahead and mark that on there so that I know that that's happening. All right, so they're raking up, they're raking up marks. All right, now it is Lysandros's turn. Here's the thing, Lysandros, without really knowing why, uh huh, you make a ranged attack on Callie. Yeah. Now go ahead and roll that for me. Yeah. Lysandros. Yeah, he yeah, thought yeah, this well. might have been. Uh... Lysandros is is uh, here's what Callie said, and is thinking to himself. He's like, man, I mean, if there's one thing that I know Phoenix would be down for, it's getting someone out from under the thumb of uh, Erebos. But in yeah. the process of trying to help out, they go like this. Ink and liar. Uh, thanks for rating us. Yeah, thank you. Ooh. Right, okay. Well, my uh, party mate is shooting me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. And Lysandros, you try to speak to maybe like convey that you're not trying to do this and you were unable to do so. Mm. Oh, I got a uh, a dirty 20. Okay, roll your damage. And she is, is engaged. Sneak attack? She is engaged with say, your ah! ally. This sounds like a surprising ah! attack yeah. to me. Okay, okay, she is but... engaged with your ally, so, who, okay, is wait. Lampid, who is the lamp Antiophes. And, uh, uh, Antiophes. <sighs> Oh, uh, all right. Yep. Yep. Please that's how roll this works. that. Oh, you can use a reroll to try to roll worse, I think, right? Maybe. If you want to try, but not for your. Yeah, if you want. You know what? I will let you use a reroll to try to roll worse, but Let's you have to take it. whatever the reroll is. Oh, you boy. have to take it. Okay. You crit. I'm using it. Mm -hmm. I'm using it. Um, It's only a 10 now. Oh, uh, I'm 16. You missed. Is that true? Yes, yeah, okay. I got. I rolled a 15 the first time, and then I rolled a five the second time. Okay. Uh, Jordan, Ooh. for the foreseeable future, until something changes, you are basically, it's, it's like having a charm spell cast on you. So you, at this point, think that the Lampids are your closest friends, and that you think that the allies you've been traveling with are dire threats. And it is, it is not... It is not, not unlike when Astaroth could not stop fighting because of the axe. Great, right. right. of course it's Jordan. <laughs> and sure. Jordan, you are essentially at this moment, you are cursed because you are carrying a magic item that carries a curse upon yep. it. Yep. And nice. you have used it. I was not going to do this unless you mm -hmm. used it and you finally used it last <laughs> week. So yeah. I'm able to do this. You are cursed you have you have now are being convinced you are being deceived into thinking that your closest friends are your enemies and your enemies are your closest friends so i will i will let you role play that moving forward as you see fit uh, i didn't want to make you do it on your first turn with it because i wanted to have the surprise of it but now i know that you as a role player will have fun with this so i'm letting you have it but oh also feel terrible about it so uh, I have to say, this and also right also <laughs> when clee when, when when callie threatened lysandros if he worked against them I like did a leap because I was like, oh, yeah. it's about to That's turn That's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> yep. Also, wait, um, can we point out how like terrible this looks for Lysandro since he just did his whole thing where he's like, ah, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, yeah. 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 I'm well aware. Looks bad, really looks bad. bad bro. Looks, looks bad. Nice. You see, I, I was, <laughs> Callie was literally just like, don't make that choice. And you yep. just made that choice. Yep. Sure did. <laughs> and I was like, when you said it, I was like, I can't believe this is being set up so well for me. All right. Uh, you guys are worried about me killing you. I don't think that's what needs to be yeah. worried about. Um, all right. And then, uh, D, you just suddenly saw an arrow bolt, a, a bolt, a arrow bolt, an arrow go flying <laughs> over your shoulder and try to hit your friend Callie. 
Um, but it did miss because there is a lot of stuff going on over where Callie is. But the only source of said arrows near you is your friend Lysandros, who you know serves the god Phoenix. Um, so D uh, looks over at Callie, sees that her best friend Callie has not been hurt, um, turns over and looks at Lysandros. Um, D is not a subtle woman. So D is just like, uh, what the F dude, what's going on? Did you miss? I thought that you were really good at arrows. Are you trying to get to the, are you trying so, to get to the lamp head? Here's my question. Mm -hmm. Am I hearing what they're saying and stuff and just have to you, interpret it? You are like hearing it. Um, but yeah, you are, you are interpreting it as, I'll let you make that choice as a role player, how you want to process that. But aside from magical means, there's not a way to immediately break this curse. Okay. I was deciding if I wanted to wear a dragon mask, but. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, uh, Lysandros just turns and then it's like, you won't get me. <laughs> no way. I'm way too smart for that sort of thing. I'm right. not. You can't talk me out of it. No one's. Ha, I'm, sure I'm in control of my mind. I'm in control of my destiny. <laughs> That's right. his response. So, D, what do you do for your actual action? Um, for my actual action, crap. Uh, do I have any spells left? What is? Um, oh, uh, uh, I can do another suggestion. Yay. Okay. Um, so I turn to Lysandros, um, cause I've heard Lysandros say a bunch of stuff that sounds super crazy to me. I'm like, Hey buddy, um, you remember I was just talking to someone about how cool it would be to maybe take a nap. Hmm. Why don't you go ahead and just like lie that head on down and see how you feel about it. I'm feeling like you're a little bit wound up. It has been a crazy day. Uh, let's just go ahead and take a little nap -see. Lysandros does like naps. Okay, make What's a wisdom <laughs> saving throw. All right. I won't let you re-roll this one, by the way. Yes, so okay, we'll, that's fair. It is. Yeah. Uh, that being said, uh, because I am a satyr, I do have uh, advantage on saving throws against Great. spells and other magical effects. Okay. So. Not curses, though, weirdly enough. Nope. Yeah, um, all right. When you're attuned to some dice that give you a curse. <laughs> all right. So I got... A six on my first roll. This is not wisdom, wise, right? Not a wise satyr. Yeah. So I think I actually get minus one on yeah. the okay. wisdom scores. Okay. Uh, yes, I do. So right now it's a five. And the next roll I got was an 11, which is a 10. Okay. So Lysandros, you, you do feel like, you know what? Laying down for a quick sleep feels like it might be a good idea. Yeah, L Lysandros <laughs> holds his bow out. And nice. then he kind of like nods and it's like, yeah, yeah. Sleep, sleep, right. <laughs> he just passes out. Yeah. Well, you don't actually pass out, but you lay down as if you want to go to sleep. Right. Okay. She didn't fair. cast a sleep spell on you. She just told you we could right. lay down and try to take. Right. It's not so. command. It's sleep. Yeah. 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 But she didn't even cast sleep. She cast suggestion. So. so yeah, it's suggestion. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. what I meant. All right. Uh, D, do anything else on your turn? Um. Nope. That's it. All right, Callie. Back to you. you okay. First of all, you, you get a fun thing you want to do. So have fun with that. Whatever yeah. That is. Okay, so Callie's just gonna watch that and like, is he asleep? <laughs> I think he went down for a little nap. I think he's, he's a tight tight. It's just like <laughs> short rest. Good time for a good time for a cat nap. Not a cat nap. Not a. I didn't mean it that way. But okay. Uh, no, we're good. Oh my gosh, I I I didn't think he'd actually choose that, but okay. We'll deal with that when we do, but for now we have you to deal with. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna swing again. Oh no, my dice have failed me. I'm gonna use a reroll. Okay. Thank you, rerolls. Thank you, reroll. That's an 18. I'll take that. Okay. Uh, plus five, so that's, yeah, it hits. Um, boop. Oh, and I get an extra special attack after this. Yeah, you do. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. That's 11 plus 3, 14. Oh, wow. Okay. And then special attack. 
Uh, do I get a reroll? Can I reroll special attack? My special attack. What as well, is the special no? attack? Describe what's happening right now. Okay, so because of my uh, because of that. Um, because of the un unwavering because mark. you're slashing, you know, yes. unwavering mark, yeah. Yeah, so because of my unwavering mark, I just get to do, I guess it's like a bonus action. Yeah, just like describe what the act what oh. you're actually doing as your attack. Okay, so basically what is, what's going to happen is um, as I landed that attack, basically the place where I marked her is going to glow again, like more blood spews out of it and so i'm like ah yes <laughs> i need to cut that place again <laughs> and i swing back at it to uh reopen the wound to make it even worse and grievous and bloodier okay go ahead and roll your damage for that oh you roll your attack first and then roll your damage yeah but yes you can definitely use a reroll because it's still a dice based okay cool right. wait, did uh, you, so wait did you use a reroll on the first attack yes then you cannot use a reroll again on the same turn yeah go ahead oh, okay then i miss this one okay uh, you make a special melee attack against it on your okay. I have to give you guys y'all some limits otherwise yeah. oh wait no it never mind it has advantage okay then okay. roll with advantage nice. fine. Okay. yeah never mind uh that plus five is 13 so it still misses okay we're good okay and uh that is your turn do you have do you do anything as a bonus oh you obviously oh, do you have a bonus action I mean I could use my bonus action to hit it uh so I might as well Sure. You're being asked to please be careful with rolls near microphones. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Wait, but mine isn't near that. I like that you looked up like there was a god up there. <laughs> well, no, because my microphone's up here, and I'm like, Wait, oh. but my dice is down here, so All how right. is that possible? Right. I don't know. I'm just letting you know what, 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 no what, what, know. what Dom has told us from up on high. Um, all right. Um, it did look like you were so that, Was that your bonus though. action, or is that, did you get another one? Um, well, I was trying to decide if I want to use it now. Where is this other lampet? Okay, it's over there. Um... Yeah, I'll go ahead and use it. What, what, are you, what are you using? Actually, no, I'm going to save it because I want a uh, claw. Callie thinks about it, but she realizes that this is the one that probably, this is the one that killed Claw, so she wants Claw to be able to get the last hit. How is this one looking? Uh, it looks looking pretty rough. Uh, it's it's it's, it's at, definitely at death's door, but not like right at it, Like it's, but it's close to it, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's I'm good. Callie's good. All right, Callie, that is your turn. Now it is its turn, and it is going to kind of, like, pause, and it's not going to do anything because the other Lampid is going to move up behind it, and they're going to start, like, it's going to, like, she's going to, like, put her hands on his shoulders, and then you kind of see these two forms start to merge together in this like Nixian star oh, style wow. format. Oh, no. And they kind of melt together. And then both of them kind of fade away. And in their place, I have to oh, switch to a different, uh, wait, wait, wait. Some sort of. In their place, a P like basically like their arms and their face kind of melt away and their face forms into this like skull like shape and their arms turn into these horrific black fluttery wings with claws and talons on them and their bodies turned into like they still have those like nick style stars within them but yeah. they're these black murky feathers and they're Ooh. they have these sharp pointy gnawing teeth and suddenly they turn into a harpy. Oh boy. Nice. And now that harpy is going to let out this cacophony of sounds. It shrieks with this loud, piercing noise. And I need Callie and I need D to make saving throws, uh, wisdom saving throws. Uh, Lysandros <coughs> and Paul, you are immune to this because you are fey folk, uh, but anyone who is humanoid or otherwise needs to take it. So Callie and D, you will be forced to take this saving throw. What kind of saving throw is it? Uh, it's wisdom. Wisdom. Mm -hmm. Great. Um. I'm going to re-roll that. How many re-rolls do we have? You currently have five re-rolls for the yep. players. I'll do Go a re-roll on that. Use okay. them. Thank you, re-rolls. Yeah. So, Ashley, I think it is so your much. heavy metal dice that's making that thud sound when it rolls. It might not be next to the mic, but it might be yeah. like a loud thud. So. Also, thanks earlier with, with Wherewithal and SF Giants 49er and Yanto 7. You guys have yeah. been 
We really, yeah, really fantastic. appreciate the support. Yeah. Yeah. And we have a couple of great toasts that are coming up with them at some point soon. So. So I got a five. Oh boy. Oh, and speaking of which, we do have we have unlocked the tier of the combo attack. So y'all do have nice, the ability good. to use that at some point. Yay. Um, yeah. All right. Um. So you got a five. Yes. Okay. Callie, you are first of all your wavering mark is gone because it's yes. a new creature. Um, yes. your hunter's mark is gone, Claw. Okay. Uh, and you, uh, D, what was your roll? I rolled an eighteen. Okay, so you passed, so you're fine. Um, all right, and you, Callie, are frightened, so you must now move as far away from this creature as you can. Um, and oh wait, no, that's sorry, that that is not a frightened move. That that's Discord and whispers. You don't have to move, however. At the start of your turn, as long as it is making these noises, which it is currently, you will have to take 2d6 psychic damage until you can break this fr this frightened wow. effect. Oh, so, cool! Yeah, let me make sure. I don't, I don't think I don't think you can you run away, but you can't. Okay, that's what it is. You have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while it is in your line of sight, and you can't choose to move any closer to it. So if it moves away, you can't run up to it. Okay, so I. One more time. So you can't move closer to it if it moves away. Okay. Um, you have disadvantage as long as it's in your line of sight. Okay. And at the start of your turn, and I'll remind you of this, you'll have to roll and you will take psychic damage as long as you are frightened of it. Okay. So, okay. And at the end of your turn, you'll be able to, to roll and see if you break as frightening. So. Great. So it let Our out like a shriek and I'm now terrified of it. Yeah. Right. And it's like it's like singing this like deathly like this this cacophony. It's like these magical sounds that are almost like impossible to quite comprehend. But it's like a Nyxborn harpy. I'm too. excited about my turn. Crazy an idea. <clears throat> Thing is wild. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um you, it might it might be from Nyx, it might be from the other underworld, you don't know, but it is, sure. yeah, it is it is definitely serving a divine force in some way. It has been it has been not unlike yourself, it has been imbued by power by a divine force. All right. Mm. Claw, it is your turn. Hmm. <laughs> well, uh I assume my hand is no longer around its throat. Yeah, I would say I would say that probably oh, it's up to you. Did you continue to hold on when there was a melting? Or I mean I I would have held on to whatever throat I was holding on to, but if it became a different thing. Yeah, I think you like, probably like you might still have a hand on like a weird, gr gross, like sticky wing, but you haven't. You're not yeah, on I'll throat pull anymore. my hand away and be like, this is gross. OK, is is Lysandros OK? I didn't. I was too busy mean mugging this guy. Was, if you look is, at him, he's he's sitting there like kind of tossing and turning and trying to get comfortable. What happened to Lysandros? He, 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 he's, uh, he made a choice, okay? He, he's with Fadax. He's, he's serving as God. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. I think I might have a something for this. Um, I'm going to walk away from this harpy thing and okay. take whatever attack is going to happen. Yeah, it's definitely going to do a claw attack at you. Um, <laughs> roll that. Get it? Cause yep. <laughs> Uh, it does a 19, so it does 10 slashing yeah. damage to you, which is half, yeah. right? Because you're a thing? Nope. T slashing just goes through. Cool. All right. Uh, and then I'm going to walk over to Lysandros. Uh, behind D in that corner there. Okay. And I'm going oh, to say... I'm doing the wrong thing now. Uh, oh, Lysandros, are you... this? I think that you may have been mistaken. Let me try to help out. And I'm going to rub my hands together with some uh, some mint oil. And then I'm going to place my hands on the side of his heads, and I'm going to cast my my last level two of the day, Lesser Restoration. Okay. On Lysandros to try to get rid of whatever happen is happening. Okay. Uh, lesser Restoration says, you touch a creature and can either end you can end either one disease or one condition affecting it. The condition can be blinded, deafened, paralyzed, or poisoned. Um, it does not say charmed. It does not say charmed. Okay. But uh, I, I, and it also doesn't say cursed. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure lesser restoration can do that, but I'm not sure. But I'm going to cast it anyway. Okay. Just in case. Give it a try, Z's at least. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, as Claw, you might not know that. Right. I might be thinking of greater restoration, but I'm going to cast lesser, lesser anyway. I was asking because I didn't know for sure if I'd do it. That's yeah. Greater 
can get rid of charmed and cursed, but I'm going to cast lesser, which yeah. cannot do those two things. Because like I, I have rules for how this works, but I didn't want to make it so it was impossible for you to break because that's just railroady. But yeah, sure. I'm well. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Give him a little head massage, temple massage. Okay. Uh, I want to be 10, 10 feet to the left there, behind between D and Lysandros. In the corner. Okay. In the corner. Right here. Cool. In right. no, in, in, in the between corner. in the corner. Okay. Uh, Lysandros doesn't actively go. stop you, but as you're kind of like trying to give the massage, he's like, oh, stop trying to sleep. Yeah, actually, kind of. I'm going to say, uh, Claw, mm. I want you to make a grapple check for me because sure. you're trying to put arms on someone who doesn't want your arms on them. Is this I'll, an I'll attack? A, well, is, this a, is this a physical attack or what? Uh, um, yeah. What do I, I, what think, do I add? I think roll uh, an unarmed strike. I will point out that check. if you mm -hmm. harm, if you try and harm him, the suggestion wears off. And then he will go back to uh, fighting. I'm gonna use you. a reroll. I will say this is harm because he's trying. He is trying to heal go. you. But sure, he's but not, he's not gonna damage you. He's just trying to get his hands on you. Uh, 14 is my after I used a reroll. 14 is my best. Okay. Uh, 14 is his AC, so you nice. are able to get at least one hand on him in order to do this restoration. I know what you're saying. Fair. I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jordan, but he's but... not actually attacking me. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Right. But it's like. No touchy. It's yeah. just being like, hum, hum. Um, but I will say that, yeah, the laceration, you, you do it, and uh, it does not seem to have an effect on him. All right. Well, worth a shot. All right. Um, and uh, Lysandros, it is now your turn, and I will say that the piercing sound of the harpy undid the suggestion. What, what are you trying well, to say? Well, I have oh. an idea. Okay. I want to no. hear your pitch. Suggestion says that I have to try and pursue the activity I am told to do to the best of my abilities. Uh -huh. And I have been told to take a nap. So I'm lying there, kind of tossing and turning as this guy's, and Lysandros gets up and turns to the harpy and goes, hey, can you shut up? Some of us <laughs> are trying to sleep. And then I want to take an arrow shot. <laughs> okay. At it. All Is right. I will let you. I will let you do this. Yeah, because uh, she's cause I cause do like disturbing this. her your slumber. Yeah. Right? Friends who roll dice, thank you for the raid. Oh, hey. Welcome, Welcome everybody. Yeah. Um, I'll let I'll let you do that. Yeah. Why not? Why not? I it, I, I think strict adherence to the wording of the spell works out in my favor. Sure. And then you know. Mm -hmm. All right. Remind me and then not I will say that as you're, as you're firing the arrow, suddenly you have this realization that you were firing the arrow at one of your closest friends. And it goes kook, and I go, oh! <laughs> yeah, go ahead and make your attack roll. Okay, uh, that is a, a dirty 20. Okay, that definitely hits. So go ahead and roll your damage. You do not get sneak attack because it is no. not engaged with your ally. It is your ally. Okay, and that is, uh, that is, that's seven, just okay. seven. Okay. All right, so it has now taken a little bit of damage. All right, and then uh, it is going to turn and look at you, and like it looks pissed, like it's glaring at you. And I'm like, I, I was trying to sleep, and I go back down to lying on the ground because I've got to keep trying to do it. Okay, uh, actually, go ahead and try to make a wisdom saving throw for me. Um, yes, because you do, you are trying to break that sleep, that, that suggestion. So wisdom ain't my ain't my strong. I know, suit. but do it anyway. Oh boy, um, uh, that's a four. Okay. Oh wait, but I do get advantage on. Yeah, yep, these yep, sure do. Still. Uh, so that's a fifteen. Hmm. That does beat D's spell. So you are no longer suggested. Uh -huh. You are now back to being a, to a, not wanting angry to boy. nap. So Lysandros yeah. lies down and then goes, "Wait, what am I doing? This is no time for a nap. You tricked me." <laughs> And then that, right. that'll be my turn. Yeah, yeah, you did your action for your you turn. You saved All us right. a turn, D. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right, D. It is speaking of which, D. It is now your turn. Okay. Um, let me look here. Can I get? Because I have uh, thirty feet walking speed. Um, can I get to the harpy? You can. Ah. Uh, I want, because I'm out of spells. I can't do no more spells. That's fair. Um, Hit him with your stick. Hit him with your best shot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna slashy slash with my sword. Okay. Great. As D moves away, Lysandros, go ahead and make an attack of opportunity. <laughs> okay. Great. I don't know, I'm uh, considering her engage with you because she did cast a spell that caused yeah. effect on you. So yeah, if you right, hadn't so done that, I wouldn't make you do it. Sure. That's a, uh, well, I guess it would probably just be unarmed because I, I had my uh, bow out. Yeah, you, you didn't have a dagger out, did you? So, okay. No, so that is 12. 
Okay, that does that does hit. Yes. So roll your unarmed mm-hmm. strike. What do you what, what's your unarmed strike damage? Unarmed strike is two. Okay, yep. so D, as you're no, walking it's, away... It's just one. It's just take one, actually. Take damage. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so as you walk away, <laughs> just Lysanne like, gets one cheap shot at you as you walk away. All right, and I'm sorry, how much damage was that? It's one. Just one. one. damage. Yep. <laughs> All right. The minimum then, allowable amount of damage. Yeah, and then you... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so you now can attack the harpy. Okay, so I'm going to attack this harpy. Um... Yikes. Okay, I'm going to uh, strike at it with my sword. And I rolled uh, 11 plus I rolled a 14. All right, that does not hit. You just missed. Ah. All right, so yeah, now it's your it. turn. All right, Callie, it is your turn. Now you can attack it, but you can't move any closer to it, but you do have disadvantage if you do attack it. Okay, and then am I able to roll to save? Or is that the end of my uh, turn? Oh, first of all, the start of your turn, roll two. Uh, actually, I'll roll that. Uh, 2d6. Um, so you take seven psychic damage to start your turn with. Cool. Fun stuff. And then, uh, let's see here. Ooh. At the. A frightened creature can repeat the same turn at the end of your turn. So you, you okay. are frightened for this turn, and then you can try to roll again to save. Right. Okay. Um. Okay. I had. Uh, well, Kelly. Kelly, Kelly's experienced a lot of battles and like scary, scary encounters. She's she's a hunter, so like even if she's been scared, she'd still attack. Okay. Um, so she's she's gonna like kind of look at it, do take a big breath in, like a. I got this. I have to. Um, she does what's at stake, and she's gonna swing. Okay. Uh, how many rules do we have? You currently have five rerolls. Still? Yeah. Oh no, you're right. You have four. Okay, I'm gonna use a reroll. Okay. I'm gonna use a different dice though, because you have not been really. All right, I'm gonna try you again, and you better behave. <laughs> okay. Yes. Very good. Uh, Seventeen. Okay. Uh, Seventeen does hit, but that but that was with advantage. It was with disadvantage. So did you roll twice? Oh no, I didn't. Okay. Um, so to go ahead and just, just re-roll two dice now. Okay. That'll be your disadvantage. Yeah. Cool. Got it. Uh, okay. I know what that dice is. Wow, your dice <laughs> is very loud. That, that like was a, drum, a natural yes. 20! Oh. Ah. What was the disadvantage? Uh, was... That, that was a 7 plus 5, so that's 12. Mm. Okay, yeah, that misses. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. And then because chat unlocked mischief and magic, um, when you make that attack and you miss, um, now, Callie, I want you to roll a D100 for me. So roll your 2D10 and get Yeah. The- Let's get that wild magic surge. Yep. All right. 2D10. This is the D10, right? With the zeros. Yeah. That'll be that'll be the 10th place. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one. Okay. 2D10. Uh, I got five zero and five, so fifty five. Fifty five yep. can't cry. Fifty five. Okay. This is really interesting. This is really an interesting one for a Leonin. Oh no! Suddenly, all of your hair oh. falls out. Oh no! Oh. So Callie, what? Callie, a magical. I, must a, I just read it. Yeah. A wild magic surge causes that comes off of the harpy as you attack her, and. All of your hair falls out, so you are now a hairless cat. <laughs> what a uh, great one! Oh no! D's damage is not showing up on Genie Beyond. Can you, can you try? Re- have you refreshed the character sheet, Danielle? I did. I did. I might okay. just have to, yeah, manually. Okay. 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 Well, when that Thank happens, you chat for that funness. Yike. Well, when that happens, uh-huh. uh huh. Callie's gonna look down, and she's just gonna be like. <laughs> and wow. release her daunting roar. Okay, I, think sure. I, I like that your mic's limiter kicked in at some yeah, point. Yeah, too. Right? <laughs> it was great. Uh, uh, yeah, so she's gonna use her <laughs> daunting roar and uh, creatures of my choice will become frightened until the end of my next turn, and that will include Lysandros. Okay, sure. 
and it's a wisdom DC 13 save. Okay. You scare me, I'll scare you right back. <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry for your ears, everyone. I should have stepped back. Oh, your, mic, okay. your mic helped right. us all. Oh, your, okay. mic, your mic okay. dealt with it. Um, okay, uh, so she does have resistance. She does have magic resistance, so she gets to re-roll that with advantage. Is uh, this magic? So she... Is it oh, might not be. magic? Um, it's not a magical thing. It's not, not a magical magic. thing, so never mind. However... She does have legendary resistance, which is two a day. She so has legendary she is resistance. To, she, this is the final boss fight, Ruben. What do you think's gonna happen? <laughs> We're level. What level are we? Three. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did did the uh, the doctor Bachleck in the end of uh, you know, you know what? Yeah. Thank wrong. you. All right. So yeah, it uses its two legendary. Just tell me. This is a this is a CR five monster. Just so okay. you all know. So all right. I'm not. I don't feel like I'm throwing too much at no, you. No, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it rolls. It, it she is able to use one of her two resistances to to soak that. Nice. Um, yeah. All right. You do, you but, do have that, and I was. What curious was the DC was again? Because <laughs> I have to roll against it, right? Uh, the uh, yes, DC, DC yeah. thirteen. DC thirteen, wisdom. So I get my my solid. Oh yeah, that's a dirty one. Okay. Not a crit so fail, you were now you were now flying with Cali. <laughs> So ah! you now you now have disadvantage on attacks and saving throws because or attacks and action and, and uh, skill checks as long as you can see Callie, mm -hmm. and you can't move closer to Callie. So you are kind of pinned against the wall until as the team, end of your next turn. You guys have done a really good job disabling me <laughs> as an opponent. We got you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Callie's mortified and hairless, <laughs> and well, uh, that will be her turn, I guess. Uh, she's gonna, is that my bonus action, or is that just an action? Oh, that, yeah, that's my bonus action. Yeah, so I'm done. <laughs> okay. Well, you already used your action to try to attack anyway, yes. so. yeah. You don't get, yeah. So, cool. All right, now it is back to the Harpy's turn, and it is gonna go ahead and just go ahead and take a... a it gets two attacks, one with a bite, one with its claws. It's going to try both of those on Callie. Okay. And somehow I just rolled two ones. So neither one nice. of those hits you. So that is nice, at least. For yeah. You. Yeah. Um, all right. And then that is all that it gets on its turn. Um, and so now we are back to Claw. Okay. I'm going to look down at Lysandros and be like, Use, I guess this is... I'll deal with you later. Yeah, you run, you half horse son of a bitch. Oh, I'm not running. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and I, I, as I turned away, the dragon head just turns right back and says, "I'll deal with you later." <laughs> and then the dragon head turns back, and I have bigger fish to fry right now. I am here for a reason. Theodora trusted me. She'd be disappointed if I didn't deal with you because I fail. I failed because of you, and now you will fail because of me. And I will cast Guiding Bolt oh, using nice. my star map. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Okay. Um, 17. Okay, that does hit. And actually, I, I went ahead and said I would use it, so I am going to take it off of her thing. But she's actually immune to being frightened. But I will say that I, since I oh. since I already said I was spending it like, at action, I will I will hold to it. So nineteen hits, roll your damage. Take sixteen radiant damage. Okay. And the next attack against uh, made against the target before the end of my next turn has advantage because uh, it is now mystically dim light, even more so than usual. Mm -hmm. Thanks to my guiding bolt. I'm going to stay right where I am. Um, let me see if I have any bonus actions that I can do here. While he's doing that, I forgot to see if I save against being frightened at the um, end of my turn. Oh, cool. Yeah, go ahead and make that roll real quick. I, I thought you did, but now I realize you didn't. That you were doing your recorded roll. Um, what is that save? Uh, that is going to be a wisdom save. Wisdom save, great. What's what's the DC? Oh, I'm gonna well, see what you we'll find out. Let her know she passed yep. it. Um, seventeen. You passed it. You are no longer frightened of the harpy. Nice. Yeah. Uh, no, no bonus action for me, and I'm gonna stay right where I am. Okay. And after and I Sally, send, Sally, the... you are now immune to that frightened for 24 hours. Sorry. Go ahead, Ruben. No, you're good. After I send the bolt, the dragon head turns right back to Lysandros and says, "You chill the heck out." 
All right, it is Lysandros' turn. And real quickly, before we get into your action, I'm just going to do a quick drop, a quick cutscene. Woohoo! We remember a moment early on in the season when we visited all these characters at a previous point in their history. We remember a moment, and Lysandros is half aware of what he's doing and half not aware of what he's doing to his own party members, but suddenly his thoughts drift back to the day that an oracle came to town. An oracle that spoke on behalf of, you were told, Erebos. Where did I put that thing at? Um, here it is. I'm looking for the arena thing. You saw, perhaps you might say, an omen of the dead. Hey. Mm. And you also were being blessed, and there was a prophecy. Fortune favors the son of, and you never gave me your father's name, so I just have father's name in parentheses. Fortune <laughs> favors the son. Splendid I'm bad at names. Splendid satyr is he. A golden age of the revelers, of which he'll oversee. And when his tale of life is spent, when he draws from his last breath, a fortune the veil has never dreamt will carry him from life to death. Suddenly, Lysandros, you hear the voice of Phoenix. And now we're going to cut to a quick moment. This is going to be a scene, and then we'll come back to the combat in a moment. Lysandros, you are in another place all of a sudden. You are in a... This is sort of like an Assassin's Creed where you get those cutscenes before someone is assassinated and like there's like they get to have like a whole conversation about the nature of the universe and, and morality, and then you cut back into someone's nice in their throat or whatever. You are standing not unlike my background. You are standing amongst a series of pillars and statues, and you realize that you are perhaps in a Nyx an altar in Nyx itself. And in front of you is a form that you have seen once before, at least in this campaign, probably occasionally in sculptures, in reliefs, in, in representations. But you see the form of your own god, Phoenix. Okay, are you really here or am I dreaming? Because I was just recently trying to sleep and I, I'm honestly feeling a little fuzzy in the head. It's good to see you, Lysandros. Well, it's uh, probably nice to see you too, uh, Lord Phoenix. Do you want to know the story of your life? I, I mean, does anybody know it better than me? Uh, at this point, like I've, what do you mean? You have a brother, don't you? Well, I, I did. I assume he's you know, dead with everyone else by now. <laughs> the, the rubes, am I right? <laughs> Dying? I mean, I miss them sometimes, but I, I just what assumed his, that was, everyone from that life's gone. What was his name, your brother? I mean, we, we called him Zan most of the time. Oh, so what was his full name? I know you had a lot of siblings. Your father did get quite around. The satyrs do. It's fine. But do you know your brother Zan? He, he looked up to you. He worshipped you. What, what, out of character question. Mm -hmm. Would I know? Like I'm going to say you probably didn't because I think Lysandros would be like, Zen goes, oh, wait, Zen goes, wait a minute. Like, I think yeah. you would probably not have put two That's what I figured. Previously. I figured if I yeah. did remember that was his full, like, his full name, I'm like, I, I mean... We had a big family. We just called him Zan. He was... Yeah, it was short for Xenagos. Does that ring a bell to you? Wait. <laughs> no. Well, not, not like the Xenagos. Oh, because... yes. That, that Xenagos. See, here's the thing about prophecies. See... It's really easy to make someone think that a prophecy about someone else is about them. See, everyone just assumed that the sun that would rise up to 
birth a golden age of revelers was Lysandros, the favored son. But it wasn't. Damn. No, no, okay, but if if that is true, uh, and uh, and you, I, I see what's happening. You are tricking me because you are Phoenix and you are the god of trickery. Oh, I've, I, I have absolutely been tricking you for like quite a long time. You are correct about that. See, the thing is, the thing about gods, Lysandros, is that we can't really undo the things that others want to do. We can only push things in a direction that we want them to. You see, fate is a funny thing. Sometimes there are figures who are very important to destiny. And as a result of that, it's hard to move them around. Like perhaps, say, perhaps a satyr is fated to become the god of rebels. And in doing so, would usurp the god of trickery. It's not enough to just kill that satyr, to stop him. I can't move Xenagos off the board, but what I can do is move his brother off the board. What I can do is set into motion centuries worth of changes. See, Xenagos goes looking for you. Xenagos leaves this realm. He finds other realms. He grows embittered towards gods. And he comes back to Theros with a vengeance, with an anger. Suddenly, his golden boy triumph is corrupted, and he is put down in his insurrection. And I get to thrive. And the only information that would chronicle the plan that I set into place was scribbled down on a mask by one of my most loyal followers. And thank you so much for carrying it into my temple, because guess what? That is the most valuable item to me in the world. And you, that makes you the possessor of I would say a fortune that the veil has never dreamt. So thank you. You have been such a Oh, your face, Lysandro. That is the that is the face. You have no idea how long I have been waiting to see exactly that face, and it's perfect. You will right. never fail to disappoint me. Uh, um okay. Wait, sorry, how, scratch how? that, reverse that, whatever. It's fine. Uh, that, okay, okay. How about this? How about this? Okay, I'm listening. This is to be fun. If I don't mind. I possess this fortune. Then I have quite the betting chip on the table. Ooh. If my friends and I can beat your forces and make it out of here, then the, the, the value you have put on me has to be completely stricken. But if it doesn't, fine, you can kill me. <laughs> You're a god, that shouldn't be that hard to do, right? Oh, no, I was about to do it anyway, so that's fine. Um, here's the deal. I don't just get to kill you. That's on the table, regardless. I get to kill your friends too. If you lose, I mean, they're gonna die anyway, so. Seems like a, but if you, yeah, you're right, if you win, if somehow you pull this out somehow, as if some form of otherworldly divine intervention manages to save you, I will let you go, and you will be worthless to me, and I can ignore you again. All right. One final addendum to the deal. Okay. okay. This if we make it, you don't get to tell them that I made it later. Okay, I'm curious. You had you had my attention. Now you have my curiosity. That's a, no, no. I'm, Sorry, I'm again, just saying again, this that, deal. That's not how it goes. Yeah. You don't get to show. You, you, all we're saying is, that if I make this deal, you don't just show up later and go, "Hey, he bet your lives on that thing we did." Is that too much? Hey, Lysandros, what is my name? 
uh, your Lord Phoenix, mm -hmm. God of Deception and Trickery. Oh, okay, yeah, that's I like that sound of that. Returned God. There's a whole bunch. There's a lot of words. They're all good, aren't they? Yeah, I'll go ahead and agree to that deal. I can, if I want to convey information, I'll find a way to do it. So mm. yeah, I'll take it. So you know what? Have at it. I I want to see how this plays out. It seems seems fun. So why not? Have at it. And then he camps <laughs> away. Yeah, he takes he takes your hand and he offers oh. you. He takes a handshake, and you have just you have just shaken hands with a god. Um, I'll take it. And uh, suddenly you wake up and you are back in the chamber and you are no longer confused. You suddenly have control over your senses. Nice. However, Jordan, one thing that you don't have anymore is a heroic destiny. Oh no, my destiny! Oh yeah, no. So you Darn. no longer have protections oh, against no. death saving throws. And if oh, you drop to no. zero, you do not get your special power. Ooh. All right. Okay, don't die. All right. Now, oh, there has been brother. a lot of conversation amongst the rest of the players in their chat. So uh, I'm not going to read through all of oh, that. Oh, you're good. You don't need to read uh, any of yeah, it. However, gotta... I will let you make a choice soon. Uh, but Lysandros, just because you played through that fun turn and that was your turn, I'm going to let you make your action now. You yep. are you are back. Suddenly, Lysandros, you can jump to your feet and your allies are your allies again and your enemies are your enemies. And what are you going to do about it? Also, level one geek, thank you for the raid. Yeah. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, okay, so Lysandros will pop to his, his uh, feet and his eyes are suddenly wide. He goes, I'm so sorry I called you a half horse bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then I'm going to uh, fire a uh, arrow at the harpy. All right. Con confused dragon noises. <laughs> oh wait, sorry, one, one thing quickly before Phoenix drops you from your little realm. He goes, oh, I do have some things that I want to say on behalf of some friends of yours who have yeah. contributed. Well, we've so, all got time for a quick drink. Of course we do. <laughs> I'm, the god of, I'm the god of mischief. Uh, Yanto7 said, talk about a magic gathering. This group has become a magical combo of awesome characters and lovely people. I can't wait to spend more time with them and you all in Dice Ex Machina Season 2. May Hermes Winged Sandals bring the show back to a suit. I don't know who Hermes Hermes is, but I'm hey. sure he's popular. Uh, <laughs> your friend Jake with wherewithal said, I travel the speed of an epiphany from Keranos to get here. I wish you the flavor of Iroas in the trials to come. Uh, the favor, I think, he, I think I think I think it was favor, not flavor, but that's right. fine. Um, but you works. Know, with, this the is our Turkey Reborn friends, so they might have made it flavor. Uh, Iroas, that's, I, that was my misread. That, it was written properly. Uh, thank you for the wonderful season. You are all amazing. SF Giants 49er says, I enjoy your show. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to to the next season, and Insane 42 says, no killing Ashlyn. Cheers! Right. Cheers we'll to that! No killing Ashlyn. <laughs> Invisible They drink. didn't say Callie! Alright, right. now, back to Jordan. You can take your turn. Thank you for all those lovely toasts. We love you. Thank you for supporting yeah. our show. We love you. Thank you. Yeah. Alright! The stakes are real now! <laughs> and he'll launch an arrow at the, uh, at the harpy. Alright, and it is engaged with your friends, so guess what you get? Hooray! Yeah. Yep. Um, I got a. You know what? I'm gonna get a reroll. Take a reroll on that one. We've rerolled us, right? Yeah. You have. Uh, currently, you have four. I'll take three. It. Three. You have three. I am not good at tracking your rerolls. I'm glad y'all are doing it. Okay. So that was an 18, which actually makes it a uh, 23. So if that doesn't hit, we're screwed. Yeah. You you get you get that, and you get your sync attack dice. Hooray! Oh. Okay. Uh. So that's 17 damage. Okay. That's pretty Ooh. good. Yeah. I rolled two sixes and a two. All right. Okay. That is uh, that is your turn? Yep. Okay, cool. All right. Now we get to D. D. Suddenly you see that a arrow from your friend uh, Lysandros has now suddenly uh, attacked the harpy. So you think that Lysandros might be back on your side. Uh, sorry. Quick interruption. This was like... Yeah. 30 minutes ago, but uh, there was advantage on that roll from Guiding Bolt. Oh, good point. Okay. Yeah, I'll go ahead roll and roll it again see if you got a nat 20. I, a nat yeah. 20. Uh, I don't. Okay. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Ruben. Yeah, a lot happened in the middle of time. Yeah. Also, advantage would give me sneak attack, so we can use that in the future. If we... mm -hmm. Right? 
Yeah, guiding bolt sneak attack combo. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All, All right. right. Now it's Dee's turn. Okay, so Dee looks over at Lysandros and goes, hey, buddy, how was your nap? There's no time for joking. Don't you understand <laughs> the stakes have risen? <laughs> Uh, I've been here the whole time. Yeah, by the way, Lysander, for you, like a whole conversation happened for them, like about a second happened. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was just lying down and I yelled at Claw yeah. and then I popped up and right. started freaking out. Yeah. All right, so uh, all I got left, I got to do some slashing. Uh, uh, so I raise up my sword and I just start hacking away. Uh, gods help me. And I rolled... I rolled a dirty 20. Yeah! Go ahead and roll your damage. All right, and damage is, come on, buddy. I rolled a 10. Ooh, all right. Nice. Yeah, it's looking rough, but it is still it is still standing and it seems pissed. All right, and now it's Callie's turn. All right, Ka Callie's going to, uh, yeah, she's going to swing. Uh, she's, uh. Scoot up in my chair. Uh, what is Phoenix's secret? Silence. Bullshit. Shh, tell me what it is. <laughs> uh, 15. Uh, 15 just hits. So go ahead and wait. Ah! Uh, nine plus three is 12 damage. All right, yeah, it's still up, but it's looking rough. All right, I'm gonna, um, does it have a mark on it already? Uh, no, it does not currently. Okay, because I, I just realized that um, if it can only have, um, if you hunters mark it, if claw hunters mark it, my mark will go away. So oh, really? Okay, yeah. that's good to oh, know okay. for future reference. Uh, yeah, yeah good to know. Claw, claw guiding bolted it, but that has now gone away because of the attack that right. Alexander's Right, and the, the hunters mark went away when it molded yep. into a new thing. All right, so I'm going to, my cut gives it an unwavering mark. The black blood spurts out of it, and I kind of give a nice <laughs> smile and okay. uh, know it's marked. Okay, nice. All right, so I'll mark that it is marked. All right, it is now its turn. Um, so it is going to take both of its attacks out on Callie because it sees you as the dominant threat in the room. Um, so I'm going to do a bite and a claw, and the bite was a natural 20. <laughs> um, so it did 19 damage plus 18 oh. necrotic damage. Gee. Oh God. Ooh. Purse. Uh, can you remind me what happens when you go past zero? You drop into death saves. So that means that on your turns, you will have to roll a D20 um, and you'll basically get three chances. If you roll above 10, you get a success. If you roll below 10, you get a failure. If you get three failures, you die permanently. If you get three successes, you are back. You're, 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 you're still unconscious, but you're brought back up. If you roll a natural 20, you get one hit point. You're back with one hit point. If you roll a one, you get two failures. Cool. All right. So Kelly, Kelly goes down. Okay. All right. That means that her, your mark is now off of it. Yeah. Okay. Callie's down. Uh, all right. Uh, that was its turn. Now, as, Claw. As, as Callie drops down, she 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 goes and falls, and she kind of looks at Lysandros, and she goes, oh, oh, you're back. And then she falls. Don't die. I made a bet. And we've got to win this one. For once in his life, Lysandros wants to win a bet. <laughs> yeah. All right. Claw, it's your turn. Uh, Claw is off to the side of the room and sees Callie fall from a distance. Mm -hmm. And in this moment becomes introspective and quietly to himself says, Nylea, god of the hunt of my ancestors of seasons and of the forest god of predation and hunger of seasons and metamorphosis and rebirth grant me the power to defeat this foe and bring life to my to my friends and i'm going to invoke the uh thing the dictated the divine intervention, the divine intervention. love that nice love it love it love it okay so here's what happens suddenly 
the room begins to kind of like the light changes almost as if the sun was shining in the room you don't see a source of light with the sun but it just becomes illuminated as if there was sun in the room as if you were feeling the warm open fields of like so the regions near Satessa, the the hunting grounds that you you as a ferris fan not quite in the because you're a little bit more east west of that but right but lands that you know well suddenly it is if the ground itself is grass it is if it is open peaceful fields you see small trees you see the murky water has turned into the clearest blue water you could possibly imagine and right in front of you Ruben, you see, I'm just going to switch real quick and show you the photo of the, the, the draw we did today. Mm -hmm. So you see the image that is on the card art for the omen of the hunt. Mm -hmm. So you see the face of Nylea herself, her arrows behind her. She is holding nature itself in her hands and she holds it to your face and she blows as if she's blowing a kiss she kind of like gives you a blessing and i get that like that con air billow through my hair <laughs> yeah it's very gorgeous it's very glamorous and suddenly the arrow that was or do you, do you have an arrow or are you, are you going to attack with, well how are you going to make a physical attack uh i was gonna do another guiding bolt okay your guiding bolt suddenly feels like it has physical form in your hand I and like that. it is it is the form of the spear that the lampids drove through you upon your death however it has been reclaimed by nature it is covered in moss in sap in bits of tree and bark and you will get to do an automatic success to roll this because this is your divine intervention and because this is a creature with flying speed you will get an advantage you will get you don't get advantage you get an automatic hit because you're using a once in a season move this is nylea's intervention yep which deals <laughs> twice the damage to a creature with flying oh wow ruben <laughs> yeah nice use of magic i would cards. like you <laughs> to roll your damage roll okay. double damage for your guiding bolt so the no, guiding sorry. bolt what is you, guiding bolt's normal damage 4d6 okay you just did so 4 so i'll roll 8d6 or no oh, okay you get 8d6 max damage what the what the what that's a god <laughs> you're it's getting true. you're getting imbued by the power of a god so what All is right. 8D, what is 8d6 what is uh, Eight, what is eight 12, times six? 24, That's 48. 48. You just do 48 Math. damage of of radiant damage yeah, to this creature. Yeah. Nice. Ruben? Ruben. Yeah. How do you describe the death of this harpy? <sighs> so Claw is sort of a cloud, uh, like a nebula of stars. It's sort of like there's an umbra around him that's draconic shaped, but inside of it, you can sort of vaguely see still that there's a centaur in there. And you see that he's sort of quiet and hands together, eyes closed. And the dragon, the pointy nose becomes a, the point of the arrow, the point of the spear. And the constellation dragon form, the wings become the tips of the bow and it sort of shifts sideways and it uh, pulls back the spear and from his chest, it explodes towards uh, the harpy and uh, finds, finds its purchase right in the chest uh, of, uh, as, as the Nyxborn energy from the arrow hits the Nyxborn energy of the harpy and it returns to nature. When the harpy gets hit by it, its form is like absorbs this bolt that you've shot at it, this spear, and you see it crackle and change like a ricochet goes through it. And it is 
as if it switches from being a lampid harpy hybrid into being this kind of like at peace dryad you have not you have returned it to nature and that is represented that is that is a great line use because that is one of our cards uh but you have you have literally given it back to nature you've given it to nylea you have given this to her and suddenly you have a sense that when you died a conversation happened between athreos erebos and nylea that you would be returned with the agreement that at the moment you were most required to, you would step in and defeat a common enemy of theirs. And you have this sense that you have now fulfilled that obligation. Okay, that I fulfilled it, that the common enemy were the, was these scoundrels and not Phoenix. Um, yeah, they don't expect you to kill Okay. God. I was, <laughs> I was just clarifying. I mean, but essentially, yeah. it'd be great. <laughs> essentially, as it drops out of its moment, as it, as, it, as it fades away, as it looks at you, you kind of get the sense that you have just fulfilled some sort of destiny of your own. And the, the dryad <sighs> itself kind of fades away into some Nyx, Nyxborn energy and disappears. And you are left in a quiet room. The moss and the greenery is still present, but it's no longer as resplendent. It kind of just remains a little bit. And the room is there. And I'll ping, Callie some, is I'll ping some druid crafts to make a flower blossom and mm -hmm. some leaf buds bloom. Yeah. And uh, Callie is still unconscious. And you have been told there is an Eidolon inside of the sarcophagus. And... There are three harps. Yep. Uh, so each each hoof step walking over to Callie uh, opens a seed pod, blossoms a little flower, all these little things as I walk over to Callie. Uh, and I will uh, cast Cure Wounds uh, at first level. Okay. And you take, you get six hit points. And uh, I'll hold out a handful of blackberries that I picked in the first episode. Say, so you look like you could use a snack. Oh. Oh. Hey, Claw. Hey, you took a nap like Lysandros did. Hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Oh. You have that all over your skin and not your fur, which is a thing that we will have to address at some point, probably. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, so. Is, is she dead? Is she dead? Where is she? She's gone. She is dead. All, all right. Look. You. That, that was good. You. Ah. 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 Friends. Ah. Uh, allies. Uh, people who are working together. Uh, now, I know that it might have appeared that I uh, did things bad, and then uh, Claw saved the day, which was great. Oh, really well done. I, I love that Nylea came in, but uh, actually, there are more gods at work here than may be <laughs> immediately clear to everyone. Uh, and as much as I am totally willing to, uh, to take take the blame and and uh, you know uh, be uh, take the, the 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 things that happen when you do think consequences for what I did earlier. Right now, we need to solve whatever's going on here and get out <laughs> because uh, there's just a lot at stake. That's all I'm saying, and I don't oh. know if it's necessarily done. Consequences. Interesting. Yes. Lysandros, I need you to make a deck save for me. Oh God. Oh. Uh, it's good. It is a, uh, yeah, it's a 21. All right. I don't light you on fire. <laughs> you, you try and Lysandros just kind of leaps it all the way. It's like, yes, aha. Yeah. Uh -huh. Very funny. I, I uh, like, I point at a spot like where your hoof is and I create bonfire on some kindling and you manage to avoid it. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, fair. But uh, look, I have reason to believe that uh, Phoenix still wants all of us dead and has the means to do that. So we need to figure out what's in here we, we need to, to, to and to get out as soon as we can well there is someone or something an eidolon of 
Varus. Varus was the bot. It was the first return that you met that had the mask itself. Right, but the way the as I understand it, the way eidolons work is that you take an eidolon and you take a return, then you shove them together into a full person. Excuse me, I burped. <laughs> right? Is that how I I think that that's I don't know if that's I think actually... that could work, but you also know that Varius's body has been destroyed, so you oh, probably don't. No. Yeah, can't really remember, do that. Because Callie gave the body to Erebus. Well, to there is to... there is an Eidolon of some kind in this box. Also, we have these harps in this room with the harpies. I don't know why I didn't make that pun earlier. But we have these harps, which I saw in a dream of mine. Mm-hmm. Which is weird wow. because this is a temple of Finax and not a temple of my god. Mm-hmm. And mm. I saw it in my dream. So I'm not going to make you roll. We're, we're getting close. We're a little, a little over, but we also have the technicality. So yeah. just for sake yeah. of storytelling, um, first of all, you haven't used your combo that you unlocked. So right. what was that again? Normally, combo that, attack. That, yeah, normally this sarcophagus lid is like almost impossible to open without like a, a, a dc 20 to strength check i'm sure. gonna say that you can use your combo to open it if you choose to um i have an idea for that i have an idea for that so okay. i would say i would recommend uh d and kelista if you could wedge the blades into the uh the sarcophagus and lift me onto them, I can sort of weigh them down to sort of flip them. Oh, are we, do you think we should open this? I, I assume so. We're supposed to. Okay. Actually, you know what? I can do something first. I'm going to cast Detect Magic okay. uh, using a spell slot. Okay. There is definite magic coming off of the sarcophagus, which is not a surprise because you were told that an Eidolon is inside of it. Right. Uh, there is also radiant magic coming off of each of the harps. These are definitely magical. Cre- these are definitely very uh, but divine not, creatures. But not items. necromantic energy. No. Uh, from... And actually, specifically, too, the magic that is coming off is not just the harps, but it's the strings. The strings are giving you an intense... Be- there is There is magic on the harps itself, but these yeah. strings are giving you an intense burst, almost like almost hurting your eyes. And you mm. feel like these strings might be the pieces of a god's body itself. Ooh. Ooh. I will say all that. Um, okay. So I have detected some magic. It, unsurprisingly, uh, th- this room has some magic in it. And I do not believe that the... Sarcophagus has necromantic, so we're not going to be dealing with an undead inside of that. Also, these okay. harps, which I saw in a dream, uh, they are magical, but the strings that they are strung with, boy, as they say in uh, down in the southern parts, boy howdy, uh, <laughs> are they magical? Uh, we should take those. A question. I, this isn't like this isn't really clarified for the mon- the creature do you think an eidolon would give up necrotic damage because it's a creature of the dead or would it not be it's like not. okay yeah an eidolon okay. is like the soul to the returned being the like body yeah. kind of yeah right yeah yeah i, I mean it is an Ish. undead i guess it is an undead it's weird yeah it's like a casper it's like a friendly ghost yeah so it might give off necromantic energy, but it's not like threatening necromantic. Yeah, yeah. Energy. So like that's so that's the, you know it's an eidolon. You've been told that. So right. whatever signature is like you're getting what you think an eidolon would look like. I'm not 100 percent sure, sure what it would be. Make it what you want. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I will it's kind of say that it's kind good. of just a magical energy of some sort. You don't necessarily okay. know for sure what school it is because it's a unique being. Uh, but also of note, the sarcophagus itself is not magical, so it, is it not. will not explode when we open it, um, and. Uh, I hope we can. Oh, there's also another secret entrance out of here. I didn't okay. mention it before. You might, you know, but it's over there. And I'll Kelly shoves the other. her sword in the sarcophagus. She just wants to get out of here. Yeah, get it open. D shoves um, it in as well. Okay, so inside, once you like see Sandra you... creates an illusionary image that says, Go, D and Callie, <laughs> over top of them. <laughs> Yeah. So the combo of your so it, I guess the mag, I guess the sarcophagus is a little bit magic, but it's like a ward. But you're breaking that ward by using your strength to get it okay. open. So that's what it is. Sorry. Um, so um, inside is 
an Eidolon that does look very similar. Like, a, it's, it's a spirit. It's kind of, like, shimmering a little bit. It doesn't quite take on a corporeal form, but it, it definitely, you get the sense that this is definitely various as Eidolon. You've been told mm. that. And it looks terrified. And it's cowering. And it says, are you here to take me to Fiend X2? Because I don't want to go. No, I just want Phoenix's silence. Do you have it? Um, well, it's on the mask, and I can I can read the mask, but I don't I don't know it myself. Ooh. I I wrote it down on the mask. Wonderful. We'll be best friends, then. we'll take you far away from Phoenix. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I okay. will pull the mask out of the bag of hold the saddlebags of holding. Uh, uh, Calissa's had that on her. Personally. Oh, you did? Okay, yes, never mind. She did not let go of that. So. Got it. Um. Hmm. I will hold the mask, but you can read it, okay? Okay. Um, so you show him the mask, and just for sake of time, um, what it tells you is that you're all dead. No, what it tells you. <laughs> <laughs> the ceiling collapses, rocks fall, everybody dies. It describes a plot from Phoenix to usurp Clothis's role as the god of destiny. Phoenix realized that ruling the gods itself was not the right move, but if you control destiny as a trickster, you have almost unlimited power mm. over the citizens of the world. So this was Phoenix's way of trying to manipulate fate itself. He got a little taste of it when he messed with Xenagos Zina, and realized this was where the real power was, the ability. If you can see where everyone is meant to go, then you have the power to manipulate their entire lives and trick them and fool them and twist them and make their lives into lies, and that will feed him the power. So when you look at these harps with this information, the feeling that you get is that the first harp, the harp that looks like it's been taken apart, that is the song of what was, the harp that is resplendent, that is clean, that is glorious, is the song of what currently is. And the song that is made, the song, the harp that is still being constructed, that is still being built, is the song of what could be. And its pieces are made from the pieces of what was. So it is the past, it is the present, and it is the future but it is a song of manipulation. You realize that somehow over time, Phoenix has collected every loose strand of Clothis, the god of destiny that he can find. And he's constructed these harps and he has manipulated them into mm. his own grand plan. And that is what the Eidolon reveals to you on the mask. He describes what Phoenix is doing. And then I'll say, first of all, I'll let you know that inside the sarcophagus, real quickly, there's some loot. I'll post that in. So you find um, an amulet that is worth 65 gold pieces, a cloak clasp worth 35 gold. Also, I'll give you the, the value later. You find an amulet, a cloak clasp, a broad armband uh, bearing green tourmalines etched like a serpentine eyes. But most importantly, you find Orestes's. This is the this is the sarcophagus of Orestes himself. You find a clay burial mask that is sculpted with a look of wide-eyed shock. Claw, mm. you are reading Magic Office. This is a magic item. Okay. And it's fact one, it's a magic that you are familiar with because you've used it yourself. These are this is this mask functions as if it were slippers of spider climbing. Ooh. So if someone Ooh. takes this and puts the mask on, they can climb walls. So I'll let you say I'll I'm not gonna make you do identity because you already know that spell and you've already right. used it. Sure. Um what you also notice is that on the the lid of the sarcophagus are very intricate etchings that perhaps yeah. someone would like you to get a scraping <laughs> I, of. Sure, and I now... I, Ruben sees why, although Claw, I don't think, knows who Kia is yet. You don't. Interesting. Well, we should um, collect these items and take some etchings. Yeah, yes. yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Sounds great. Uh, we um, should destroy the harps, probably. Sure. Destroy the harps? Uh, let me just... Lysandros wants to go over to the harp that is built. Mm -hmm. And just be like, oh, these, these are uh, fine-looking harps, right? Uh, um, Lysandros... I wonder how they sound, though, the right? And the, Lysandros wants to uh, just pluck one of the uh, cords on the harp. You hear a gorgeous, 
beautiful. It's it's the most beautiful, most perfectly played note you have ever heard in your entire life. You realize you've probably set fire to an entire village, right? Yes, or accidentally created a kraken in the middle of the ocean. Can Lysandros something... try playing a song on the harp? <gasps> yeah, make a performance check. I do check have a me. proficiency in the lyre. Make a performance check for me. All right. It fits that you would be a liar, Smen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and hey, we didn't die. Yet. Wait till he plays Old Town Road. Okay, so that's a dirty 20. <laughs> okay. Ooh. I roll a lot of 15s on this uh, yeah. d20. Uh, do you have a song in mind? Lysandros improvises a song about a satyr who lived under uh, lived under the assumption that he could not die and was being tricked by uh, the god <laughs> Phoenix. But then he found out that the truth of not dying was inside him the whole time. <laughs> and until he truly wants to, uh... death will not find him. He tries it and he, it's all like, ah, uh, but, but in the end he could not die until he truly wanted to. Interesting. And he's like, I don't know if that would work, but if there's an over under chance that maybe, uh, you know, with a little bit of destiny going on, I could get my, uh, ah. my longevity back. We'll find out if that worked eventually, I assume. I do believe that we have another step in our journey now, though. Particularly, the... sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I interrupted you. Particularly you, Lysandros, you are going to have to make a decision at some point. It, not, not now, maybe not soon, but at some point. Phoenix is trying to do a thing and sent us here to do a thing. We were patsies in his plan. Uh, and look. we now have a great weapon of Phoenix's in our possession. That means that forces of Phoenix are going to be coming for it. Look, from what I know, it sounds like Phoenix is probably already coming for us. So let's just get this we should go. and let's get out immediately. Okay, we'll snag the Ghost of Christmas Past, Present, and Future. I'm gonna, okay, for those oh. those harps are gigantic. They're, oh, they they're are huge? big yeah. Greek harps. They are not, they're like, they have been collected over time. I they're see. too heavy for you to move. They won't, they won't fit in your saddlebags. Got it. Can we, can I unstring them? Um, make a unstringing check. <laughs> make a dexterity check. Okay. Bardic inspiration still? Yeah, go for it. I haven't used it yet. Yeah, it's been, it, it, weirdly, it's probably has been only been about 10 minutes because the way that combat rounds work in D&D, but yeah. So. <laughs> okay. That's not terrible. What is this sleight of hand or just, well, it's zero. It doesn't matter. Uh, 17. Yeah, I'll say my that number. You're able to unstring the harp of what was. Okay, well, we got one of them. Can you? Callie, can you, all you have try a hand to... up. Yes. Um, is the eidolon still in the sarcophagus? Yeah, just he's chilling he's, there. He's still very afraid. He's like, okay, okay, what, what? And just so I understand, the eidolon is something that's dead. So when the returned escape from the underworld the trauma of the experience of becoming a return rips someone from their identity. And the Eidolon is the spiritual rep representation of what is left over after the returned is. So it is a separate piece from it's, it's like the, if you put a returned and Eidolon together, you might get the original being, but they don't want to reconnect. They, they right. are, they are their own separate things now. So it, it's, it doesn't like exactly have like the consciousness of various, but it's like, a spiritual representation of all of his memory, all of his identity, everything about him. That's why he knows what's on the mask, because he actually wrote it when he was still a, a sentient being. That's how Daxos gets but put back together. Most yeah. importantly, at Callie, you don't feel a twing from your your circlet. Okay. Mm. Cool. Then I guess I'll let it live. Okay. Do you want to return with us? Where are you going? Are you going somewhere safer? Somewhere safer, safer than here. Basically anywhere. 
Memphis Wait. has a kingdom to run. Oh, that's that, right. Yes. I oh my god. We need to find your kingdom. I really don't want to do that, but we can go there. It's probably safer. Um, Lysandros and D, can you try to unstring the other strings, maybe? Uh, I think at oh. this point we're running a little out of time. What I do want to say is when you when you unstring the strings from the the the, the thing of what was, uh -huh. you don't get to keep the body parts of the god. But oh. like what happens is when you do it, um, the as they become untethered from the the, the harp also made by a god, yeah. Yeah. they just turn. You see the radiant energy of them disappear. They just Good. turn into like regular white hair. Good enough. We want yeah. we don't want Phoenix to have access to these powers in the temple. Hallie's just gonna take her sword and smash the other two. Also works. Okay, make a strength check at disadvantage because you are attacking literal objects of a god. Works for me. Uh, 17 on that one and natural 20 for the other one. So 17. Okay. Yeah, you get them both. I'll say, I'll say. You oh no, that was both. my disadvantage for one. Sorry. So oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, that's natural. You know what? It's a finale. I'm gonna let you have a natural 20 and let <laughs> you rock it. Just get it. I don't want to. I don't want to belabor. I don't want to belabor what's definitely going to Man. happen. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So let's just say I, I'm not going to take your natural twenty from you when it's a cool thing you're doing. So yeah, Callie smashes them up, and then both the harps are gone. Um. The the harps are physically there, but once like once the hairs have been pulled off of them, they lose their potency and they are gone. But you are now in this room, and you are unable to leave because both the sealed slabs are still yep. there um what else what else do you want to do uh is there any lysandros wh what 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 gives how do we get out of here I, I don't know i don't think phoenix is on my side anymore it, maybe everyone make a personal make a history check every one of you Ooh. mine's a two I'm gonna reroll if we have five. Any. Natural yeah. twenty. Uh, hey, there we go. <laughs> Callie, yeah, you got it. You now remember <laughs> that you were asked by Kia to make etchings of important things inside yes. the yeah. temple, and you see a sarcophagus lid that is covered <gasps> with important etchings. We did that. <laughs> We did that as, already. Well, you said you were going to, but you never actually did oh, it. Okay. Um, so as as Callie puts this paper oh, on yes. the sarcophagus, as she scrapes and puts and does the etchings, you just feel this strange sensation. And suddenly you are no longer in the court of Arrestus, and you are standing in the hut of Kia the Sage hey. outside the town of Melitus. And she looks at you and she goes, oh, I was worried you weren't going to do the etchings. <laughs> well, oh, hey, what? I got them, okay? We're, we're right here. Oh, and we have extra ones too. They were kind of creepy. They were the, the readings for the, the graves or whatever. But we Sandra also suddenly we brought yells the... to the sky. He goes, "This counts. We made it out. We made it out. <laughs> this counts." Okay, it, I'm gonna address that in a moment. What? Okay, you have a finger up. What's up? Yeah, we call. also this one that's hiding behind me. We brought them out of the thing too. Oh, oh, you poor lost soul. And she she looks very concerned, and she walks over to it, and she is being very gentle, and she kind of like reaches out to it. And she like graces what would like be its cheek with her hand. And it looks a little bit more at peace when she does this. And suddenly as it calms down, as it relaxes, you see its body turn into the shape of a normal cat. And it looks like it's calm and it's at peace. And that is when you realize that all of the cats that have been, or maybe not all of them, but many of the cats that are regulars at, that are hanging around her area are lost souls that she has put to peace. Um, she has she has calmed lost souls that can no longer find their original form and that ah. are stuck. And now she's made them at peace. And she looks at Lysandros and she says, "I, from what I understand, you 
maybe looking for a new god? I mean, I'm open to negotiations. Maybe we, should have, a converse- maybe we should have a conversation <laughs> in the future, you and I. But for now, I just want to give you a little bit of a gift. And she puts her hand on your temple and everybody else sees like energy coming out of her hand that looks almost like the white hairs that were on the um on the harps Mm -hmm. and they kind of wrap around lysandros's head lysandros what you feel is this very calming very peaceful sense and what what you feel is for the first time in your life you were at peace with the idea of your own destiny and you feel as if these almost like when you have an ice cream headache like that spike in your head but it feels good you know and you feel almost like as if there were hairs that were working their way through your very brain and they are creating new labyrinths within your head new avenues to go down new ways for your thoughts to not get lost and you feel the dice in your pocket drain of their magic and now they are normal dice made from the hooves of your father they are no longer imbued with phoenix's power they are no longer the most valuable item and they you no longer are a heroic destiny but you have now been given the supernatural gift of inscrutable, which means that you will never again be allowed to have your brain taken over by another force. Mm. And she goes, Ooh. consider that an opening negotiation. And then, and she goes, and if you want to do more on behalf of destiny, we can talk. And then she leans back and a black cat hops up on her lap and she pets it and she says, I think you may have earned a vacation. How about the islands? And that is where we're gonna end this session. Yeah. Uh, that will lead us into our one off. However, I'm gonna do a real quick thing. Uh, Ashlyn is gonna be late to our marathon next Sunday. So, what's gonna happen is you all are going to be on a boat that goes to an island. Callie is going to be late getting there. And this is real quickly going to be part of what happens while you were doing that. So I'm just going to do it. We're almost, to, we're running a little bit late. We also started late, but I just want to do this real quick yeah. uh, to end the season. And Callie. Yes. You, your friends have kind of headed off on a trip, little, little R and R to relax. And you're feeling a little bit strange. You you went on this quest. You've spent all this time fighting against Phoenix and he's returned and you've done all this stuff. And it all seems strange that now you don't really know what to do next. You haven't felt that tinge of your circlet. And you're by yourself and suddenly you get that familiar sense of decay and death in the air. And... You look up, and once again, you see the form of Erebos in front of you. And he says, Ah, Callie of the Swift Claws. You were willing to die to protect the natural order of things. Your bet, your promise to me was death for a life and you have fulfilled that promise and so i relieve you of your burden to me and you suddenly feel all magic drain from your circlet thank thank the thank the world (laughs) but i make an offer to you you have done a lot of good in my service Would you please be my willing champion? Thank you. What does that entail exactly? Not unlike what you have done before. 
when there are returned nearby, you will have the opportunity to hunt them down on my behalf. Only now it'll be a little bit more your decision. The more you work to uphold the laws of life and death, the more gifts I will give you, the more powers I will grant you, and the more you and I can help make this world what it should be. And what do you think this world should be, Erebos? I think that people should have their time. And when that time is over, they should come to me. And they should stay there. Yeah, yeah. I've been giving this a lot of thought since you offered it to me and uh, And uh, yeah, I've been, I have been, you know, when I, when I came to you to help me with my sister, I, I, I had to, I, no one else, a, a mere mortal could not help take down what she became, you know. Uh, yes, she had been poisoned by Farika's mind power. And so I, I. It does take a God to undo the things that a God has done. And see, that's, that's the problem with you gods. You know, you just, you, one God leads to another God. And there's always just these issues with the gods. And I'm just, I'm sick of it. You know, man, I'm just, I am very, very sick of it, Erebos. I'm tired of the gods <laughs> like i respect what what death and what it is and i will always want to uphold that but i am so tired of the gods interfering with our world and all that it is and its wonders and beauty and i hate watching my friends my family get torn apart by your stupid drama and your little schemes that you play out for all of eternity. And I don't want that. I don't want to be a part of that. I don't. So no, I'm sorry. I pass. I, I, I can't live with myself knowing that I, I play a hand in any of that. So Thank you for what you helped me do for my sister. And I hope that she is doing well in the underworld. But no, I want nothing to do with you or any of the other gods for as long as I live. And I will see you again someday. <laughs> but hopefully not for a very long time. So you give this speech and you may expect him to show anger or rage or hurt at you but instead he just smirks and he says it is this power in you that made you so appealing as a member of my guard but while i am not surprised at your decision i am of course disappointed but i respect it so Callie of the Swift Claws, you are free of my gifts, you are free of my burdens, you are free of obligations to me. Now, Ashlyn, what is your supernatural gift that you took at the start of the season? I'm mobile. Okay. You no longer have that mobility that is granted to you as a divine power. However, you now will take the, icon the Iconoclast. Yep. Supernatural yep. gift. And because of that effing amazing speech you just gave, I am starting you at level 10 of the piety that you would have as an iconoclast yeah. because you just nice. gave like the most devout iconoclast level <laughs> that we could so possibly have. And while we're on that note, let me just see if we got something unlocked. I don't think we did, but we can see. Uh, we did not. 
Uh, so you are all leveled up to level five now. Nice. I had I had a a high tier unlock that would have put you at level six instead, but Ooh. we didn't get there. It's okay. It was pretty high. It's all right. Um, however, we did get uh, the fate spinner, which is going to be one last draw. I think. I think we'll not do that draw live on the air tonight because it'll affect season two. Sure. And so I would rather let's do that as like a height. We'll do that as we're, as we're getting ready to start up season two, we will do a bigger draw. And then we can do like Jordan said, we can do a physical cards and we can film the opening physical cards. Yeah. I think that would be a, I think, I think that might've been said off mic before we started the show, but if we didn't either way, I'm making executive decision right now that fate spinner will happen. We'll film it. We'll do a cool thing with it. Um, Dom, did we unlock the thing for Ashlyn to do her speech? To do her re recap? Oh, we did not. How close are we? Okay, sorry. Yeah, sorry, I shouldn't have asked. Um, okay, so that is our show for tonight. Awesome. That is our season. I want to thank my players for coming along this Therosian journey with me. Uh, I want to thank wow. our, our our chat for listening and, and enjoying and watching along with us and for all of your uh, support as we have done this. You guys have been fantastic. And uh, I want to go ahead and go ahead and let uh, remind us we are we do have one more episode. We have a, a standalone story that will be happening next Sunday. We're going to be part of the marathon right here, raising money for Trevor Project. That'll be its own kind of standalone story. All these characters, it is canonical, but it's kind of an interlude between seasons. Sure. And uh, let's go ahead. And so that'll be from that'll be from uh, it's it's seven to eleven. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Seven, seven to eleven, yes. right here, Pacific Time, Saving Throw Show. Check that out, Ali, Ali, yes, I don't PM, gotta wake up PM, in the morning. PM, okay. PM. Uh, we're not gonna make you do that. Just seven checking. to eleven PM Pacific Time. Our special guests, Ali Gertz and Kyle Shire, will be here. Yeah. Uh, they are both delightful. Uh, Kyle is is very uh, prolific within the uh, the RP community. Uh, he's the producer for a very pop very popular show that I don't think that I'm yeah. allowed to name. Uh, Allie is, uh, she is on. Name it? I don't know if we are. I don't want to blow up his spot like that. So I'm going to sure. be cool. Uh, Ali, of course, is on the uh, Bloomhouse D and D podcast, uh, an, an, uh, uh, Fright, Fear Initiative. So check that Ooh. out. But also, she's just an amazing. Uh, they're both very, very funny, amazing comedians who are very active in a lot of D and D stuff. So I'm really excited to have them at the table. Uh, I've already know that Kyle's character ties into D in a fun way. Uh, completely independent of each other they thought of something really cool nice um and so that is please check that out uh and we did have one last uh re-roll that came to us from so swanky pants so thank you so much for that re-roll and i just want to thank my players again and i'm going to thank them by letting them say hello and say their goodbyes so let's start with jordan hi everybody my name is jordan pigeon you can find me on twitter at jordan pigeon and uh then you know tune in here for the broken pact when it comes back in a right. couple of weeks and uh and and yeah, I'll be there at the marathon. Awesome. Danielle. I'm Danielle Radford. You can find me at Danielle Radford on Twitter. You can find me at Danielle uh, uh, underscore Radford on Instagram. So if you're looking for anything that I'm doing, find me there. Check me out. Um, also, watch the Honest Trailers. They're every Tuesday. And uh, I help write them. And they're pretty funny. So uh, go uh, do that thing. Oh, and if you like hearing about wrestling, I have a wrestling podcast called Tights and Fights. We just got a huge... Uh... Whoa! Tip. So thank Holy you. Crap. Have a game changer tip. Four. So let us let us go oh ahead and God. have everyone Wait, say their things, and then we will talk about yeah, buddy. What, what just happened. <laughs> uh, I'll let Dom, I'll let Dom catch up with what just got unlocked. So Ruben, go ahead and say your goodbyes. Thank you, Vampire Fifty Four, for that huge yeah, tip. Thanks, Vampire uh, We love thank you so much. You. So <laughs> Ruben, say your piece. Ashwin, say your piece. I'll say my piece. Then we'll come back to what just what just happened. My, my then we'll get brain. back to pieces. <laughs> yeah. I have to put myself together. Hi, hi, everybody. I'm the Internet's Mox Ruby. You can follow me everywhere at M O X R E U B Y. Uh, I'm one of the co hosts of the Magic Mike's cast, M I C S. It's a Magic the Gathering news show, Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Pacific. Uh, I'm also the Dungeon Master for The Broken Pact, which is coming back February 15th. Hashtag The Broken Pact RPG. I'm also the DM for Tales from Tetheria at youtube.com slash lasercorn. New episodes every Saturday. Uh, Hi, everyone. Ashlyn. I am Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Twitter as Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Instagram as RAR. It's Ashlyn. And if you want to check out my voiceovers, uh, you can go to my website at ashlynrose.com. 
And I am Riley Silverman. You can find me on Twitter at Riley J. Silverman, on Instagram at Riley Silverman. And my fun thing to promote this week is that my friend Emily Blake has spent the last nine months compiling a fan-created version of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer musical episode, Once More with Feeling. And it is on YouTube called A Buffy Quarantine Musical. Nice. Amazing. uh, I am in it. It is very fun. It is very dorky. And I sing... I think the best line in the entire musical episode and it's very fun. And so I won't tell you who I play. I'll let you check that out for yourself. Um, But I think you'll enjoy it. So check that out. And now we will unleash what is happening. So thank you (laughs) so much, Vampire 54. You have knocked us out of the park. This is is blown away. So first, uh, a new champion has entered the chat. Uh, next week is a special marathon episode featuring guest stars Kyle Shire and Allie Gertz. Unlocking that means that their characters now get to start the game with some fun magical items. So I'll work with them, figure out what Good. they're going to start the game with. Neat. That'd be cool. Uh, Triumphant Surge. This is our big one. Sometimes Theros calls for an extra dose of epicness. If this tier is unlocked before the end of the finale, the next time the players level up, they will gain two levels instead of one. So you were all now level six. Yeah. So, yeah. so thank you yeah. so much for that. Wow. And now we will end... First of all, uh, before we do our last thing, let us, uh, reminder, marathon show next Sunday. There's going to be shows all day. We're going to see, um, it's going to be New Pantheon. It's going to be uh, Salt Bay. And it's going to be us. So, you know, we're on from eight to, from eight to uh, 7 to 11. However, um, you the, sh- the thing starts at 10 a.m. We're raising money for Trevor Project. And so it's gonna, we're closing it out, but you should watch all the shows. Uh, also, we are going to raid Scabby Rooster after this show. Good. Um, but we also want to make sure that during the week, you check out our brand new show here on the channel, All Games No Masters, our GM Let's RPG that continues its playthrough of The Quiet Year by Avery Alder. That'll be on Wednesday at 7 p.m. And now... Uh, we're ready to get your rooster. We have a new season of the show coming after the next season of Broken Pact. What we see is the underworld of Theros itself. And for centuries, the god Clothis, the god of destiny, who has been served on the surface by Kia the Sage because she has had to spend her time guarding the lost vault of the Titans who once ruled over Theris and who had been chased down. During the rise of Xenagos the Reveler, Clothis had to turn her attention away from her sacred duty as the guardian of that vault. And as a result, some monsters and some creatures have broken out of that vault. And so we see out in the vast oceans of Theros, a storm is brewing. We see thunder. We see the Storm King's thunder. Thank you very much, you all. We'll see you in season two. Bye. I like that. <laughs>